Big Noon Saturday is sponsored by AT&T Business. Welcome to the Crimson Cathedral, the Palace on the Prairie, Gaylord family, Oklahoma Memorial Stadium. Big 12 play begins right now as Kansas State comes to town to take on the third-ranked Oklahoma Sooners. Hi, everybody. I'm Gus Johnson, along with my partner, Joel Klatt. And welcome to Norman, Oklahoma. And today, partner, the entire country will get an opportunity to see a young man, a red shirt freshman from Phoenix, Arizona, at quarterback for OU, that people feel has a chance to be special. Well, he better be great because he's playing quarterback at Oklahoma, right? It seems like every one of these guys is great un under Lincoln Riley, and Rattler certainly has that ability. Immense talent that K-State's going to have to deal with today. All right, K-State won the toss to first. Oklahoma to receive a series that dates back to 1908 folks Oklahoma leads it big and the Sooners have won 13 of the last 17 dating back to 2000 but remember last year it was Kansas State with the huge upset ambushing OU in Manhattan 48 to 41 Charleston Rambo the deep man for OU K-State Oklahoma Big 12 play on Fox right now and this would kick out of the end zone for a touchback so coming onto the field the rattler from phoenix arizona spencer rattler red shirt freshman and he was a five-star recruit did just about everything as a high school player yeah and and he's going to be a little different than what we've seen in particular last year jalen hurts was a little bit more run heavy from that position but you talk about big shoes to fill Every year since Lincoln Riley has been either the offensive coordinator or head coach at Oklahoma, his quarterback has been in the top four of the Heisman Trophy voting. Good luck, Spencer Rattler. Here we go. First down and 10 of the 25-yard line. T.J. Pledger in the backfield with Rattler, and they'll run the reverse on first down. A lot of running room for Oklahoma. Charleston Rambo rumbling, and he'll go out of bounds close to the 45. So misdirection on the first play of the game. And I know we're going to talk a lot about Rattler, but they've got an outstanding offensive line led by Creed Humphrey, one of the best in America at the center position. And then outside, they're a lot more young than they have been in previous seasons, but they've got great talent. Look for guys like Charleston Rambo to break out this season. Gain of 21 on the play. On first down, they'll run Pledger over the left side. He'll fall forward, tackled by Jalen Pinkle. This defense is undermanned. You just heard that report from Bruce Feldman. There are five players that are out of this game from the secondaries too deep. They're playing with patchwork at the corner position, which means the front seven has got to be great, led by Justin Hughes and Elijah Sullivan. Those guys have got to have a huge day. Second down and nine at the 47, and Rattler throwing for the first time, finds Rambo. And Rambo with some nice moves after the catch. But how about this Spencer Rattler? Seven, I mean, excuse me, six feet, 198 pounds, preseason Big 12 Newcomer of the Year. I just love his arm talent because I, I saw a young Patrick Mahomes in Lubbock, and that's the type of pop that I see out of this kid's arm. He's hyper accurate with the football, very quick release. I think the sky's the limit. Third down and two, looking for the first down, and Oklahoma has it. As the Sooners drop one right over the middle, Jeremiah Hall back up tight end with the catch. And this, this offense is younger, way more inexperienced than we've seen in the past. But I think at the wide receiver position, at least, Gus, they might be deeper than they have been in the past. They, they don't have that singular star in particular like we saw last year with CeeDee Lamb. But I think as a group, they could be even better. A lot of talent on the outside and electricity, and this guy can get the ball down the field. So look for some shots taken here early in the game. First down at the 39. Rattler steps up in the pocket with the running room, tries to bounce it outside and is dragged down at the 34 by Boy Doe. 
And Echo Boydo is one of those guys forced into the lineup. Wasn't even in the two deep for their first game against Arkansas State, but having to start today at corner because of the rash of both injuries and obviously COVID-related uh, isolations and quarantines. So decimated in the secondary. I, I expect Kansas State to try to help those corners out all day with two deep safeties, which means we should see a lot of running lanes for Oklahoma running backs all day. Second down and five. Rattler strong in the pocket, deflected and intercepted by Kansas State. Elijah Sullivan pulls it out of the air, and Oklahoma turns the ball over on their first series. What a great push by Jalen Pickle, the defensive tackle, number 93. He was getting double teamed, and he pushed that great center Creed Humphrey right back into Rattler's lap, and then he's going to just rise up and tip this ball right in the face of Rattler, and it falls to his running, excuse me, linebacker Elijah Sullivan right there. There's that right hand. Sullivan's in the right place at the right time, and number zero with the interception. What a great opening series for that defense getting on the field getting a stop and putting their offense on the field so Skyler Thompson comes on to lead his Wildcats this is the fifth year senior 29th career start he's 15 and 13 overall on first down from the 33 and they will run it straight ahead and that's a little guy that we're going to be talking a lot about over the years. Deuce Vaughn, the freshman from Round Rock, Texas. Turner Yell with the tackle. 5'5", 165 pounds. Deuce Vaughn, and that's who Skyler Thompson's going to be handing off to. Thompson's going to have to play great today, folks. He was brilliant last year when they upset Oklahoma in Manhattan. He's going to have to play similarly today, and they're going to have to control the clock, run the football all day long. Scored four rushing touchdowns in last year's 48-41 upset. Second down and eight. Vaughn, the deep man in the backfield. They give it to him. He breaks it back. Keeps his legs churning. Gets close to the first down. Deuce Vaughn. Stopped by Trey Braun. Vaughn's running behind an offensive line that's completely new. All five guys up front are new starters for Kansas State. They're replacing 159 career starts that left their lineup from a year ago. So look for them to try to gain some cohesiveness after a rough outing against Arkansas State. And then in the back end, watch for Malik Knowles in particular to be a big threat down the field. He was open a couple of times. They didn't connect in that first week. They need to hit those today. Third down to two at the 41. Thompson wants the first down, and he stood up and will not get it. Great penetration by the Oklahoma defense. Deshaun White leading the way. And it looks like the Wildcats will have to punt it away. Yeah, great job by Deshaun White. Watch as he's just going to scoop around the block right there. He goes to his left. Now he gets in position, and bang, he sticks Tyler Thompson right at the line of scrimmage. And it's a big third down stop for the OUD. So Marvin Mims back deep now. Ty Zentner standing at his own 27-yard line, the punter for K-State. Mims signaling for the fair catch, and he has it at the 17. Time now for the progressive game flow as Oklahoma prepares to come back on the field. Big Noon Saturday is presented by AT&T Business, keeping your business connected now with 5G nationwide. And is sponsored by Progressive Insurance. Save when you bundle auto, home, or motorcycle insurance. Welcome back to Norman. No score. Oklahoma ready to take over for the second time on offense in this game. Seth McGowan comes in at running back. Oklahoma coming off their first win of the season as they beat Missouri State back on September 12th, 48 to nothing. Rattler threw for 290 yards and four touchdowns in one half of play. And what makes the kid such a special prospect? 
Well, it starts with just his arm talent, right? His, his ability to throw the football. By the way, a great tackle there by Jaron McPherson on the talented freshman running back. But it's also the fact that he's got amazing amount of poise for a young player. He's got, as, as Lincoln Riley put it to us, he ain't afraid. And he won't be afraid regardless of who they play or what environment he's going to be in. And you need that as a quarterback, that confidence to step up and throw the ball anywhere on the field. On second and seven, he throws it across his body, and it's complete at the 44-yard line. Austin Stogner with the reception. That's a good bounce back throw right there. Moving to his right a little bit, and he threw that off of one foot. There's a little of that talent I was speaking of accurately over the middle, over a linebacker in front of a safety. Because I call that a layered pass, right? Those are tough passes to make, in particular for young quarterbacks, because it takes touch, and yet you have to drive it enough to get it there in front of the safety. That's a 22 yard gain. First down and 10 at the 42. They'll run it with McGowan as he tries to sneak through the hole. Khaled Duke and Drew Wiley combining on the tackle. It's interesting. They had so much success, speaking of Kansas State, uh, State's defense, with that exact technique a year ago. Gus, it's called chase down technique. The defensive end who is unblocked just chases down that running back from behind, and they did that beautifully a year ago in that huge upset, 48-41, over the Sooners, and that's one of the reasons the Sooners had such a hard time running the football. Second down and 10 at the 42. They throw it out wide. Rambo. It's a good open field tackling. Parker Jr. with the tackle for Kansas State. A.J. is senior. And he unquestionably is their best player in the back end. And when you're decimated via injury, what happens is that your best players have got to play great football. And it starts at least in the secondary versus a talented team with not only your covering, coverage ability, but your ability to tackle in space. So a great play there from A.J. Parker. Third down and nine at the 43-yard line. Ledger in the backfield with Spencer Rattler. Five-yard penalty remains third down. And that's Hubert. He's their best player up front. He was preseason all Big 12. Last year, he was a first-team all Big 12 performer with 12 and a half tackles for loss, seven sacks. A guy that they're expecting to potentially get pressure on the quarterback, in particular in these third-down scenarios, but gives Oklahoma five free yards there. Third down at four at the 48-yard line. Here's Rattler off his back foot over the middle, and it's caught again by Stockner. And over the last two years, there have been some pretty good tight ends. Flag on the play in the Oklahoma backfield. I sure has. Stockner there with a nice catch. There was a flag way back where Hubert was hitting Rattler, and it looked like he hit him kind of high with one of his hands up near his head. Personal foul, roughing the passer. Defense number 56, board of the head. 15-yard penalty will be added to the end of the play. First down. There it was. See that right hand just goes up there, whaps Rattler right on the head, and now two consecutive penalties. They had a third and ten, had forced a third and ten, were looking to be in good shape there, and their veteran defensive end, back-to-back -back penalties, first and offside, and then there erupting the passer, and Chris Kleinman cannot be happy about the way that that drive is ending up now inside the 25-yard line, Gus. On first down. Rattler pulls it out, sprints out with time, looking, turns, and just steps out of bounds around the line of scrimmage. Khalid Duke there to usher him out of play. What I'm seeing so far from this Kansas State defense is that they're going to give all the help that they can give to these corners, a lot of them playing for the first time. And so they've got two safeties back. It forces the quarterback to be patient and hold on to the football. On second down and nine, Rattler over the middle, and he just dumps it down to T.J. Pledger out of the backfield, and he'll get inside the K-State 15. This is where that run game has got to be good for Oklahoma. Third and short, they've got one of the better offensive lines, certainly in the Big 12, maybe in the country. And you got to feel like if you're Lincoln Riley, you can get under center and then hand the football off. Maybe even throw a little play action here if you want. Third down and short at the 15. Empty backfield. Actually, Pledger in the Wildcat formation. He'll run it. Pledger looking for the first down and has 
has it as he falls forward to the Kansas State 10. Khalid yeah. Duke again along with McPherson. They get in that Wildcat, so Rattler's going to get out of there, and then they're going to pull the guard and watch Pledger as he just stays patient. He goes up here for the Wildcat snap, and then just the patience after he catches the football right there. The little hesitation allows the blocks to get set up. Then he finds his hole, and it's a first down for OU. So Pledger picking up the first down at the K-State 11-yard line. McGowan replaces him in the backfield. Here's Rattler trying to make something happen, and he'll be taken, tackled for a loss. Flag on the play on the opposite side of the field. Elijah Sullivan with the tackle for the Wildcats. Beautiful job by Sullivan there in the open field, bringing Rattler to the ground. There is no foul on the play for offensive holding. It'll be second down. All right, so they wave it off. But Sullivan, he was that near side linebacker, and he did not go with the, the, the flow of the offense on that run fake at all. He was just waiting as if he was in man to man coverage with Spencer Rattler, the quarterback, and then made a great tackle. A captain granted a sixth year of eligibility here in 2020, and he's trying to make the most of this opportunity. Starting alongside a high school teammate for the first time, Justin Hughes also granted a sixth year of eligibility. Those two guys have got to play great today. Tenth play of the drive on second down and ten near side ran his helmet comes off. Gang tackling by Kansas State. Charleston Rambo, second to C.D. Lamb in receptions last season with 43, had three 100-yard games and five touchdowns. I'm interested to see where they go here, because, Gus, you and I did enough Oklahoma games last year as you see that helmet pop off right there. Kind of a dangerous play. But where did they go when they needed a play? Who'd they throw to? C.D. Lamb. So who's the guy now? Where does Spencer Rattler look to when the chips are down on a third down inside the 20? Third down and 10 at the 11. Rattler. Play fake. Rattler. Dancing. Squares. Fires! Touchdown, Oklahoma! Marvin Mims, a talented freshman out of Frisco. to start with and then Rattler is going to have to get out of the pocket when he gets out of the pocket what you're going to see is Mims across the back of the end zone okay so right here you're going to get a little escape and then he finds Mims who just continues to work with his quarterback so a young wide receiver understanding what he needs to do get to the end line of the end zone work with his quarterback and finds himself wide open extra point by Gabe Burkich and it's good third ranked Oklahoma Going on top of Kansas State, 7-0, Rattler to Mims. We're going to hear that a whole lot in the future in Norman. Spencer Rattler leads OU on an 11-play, 83-yard drive, eating up 4 minutes and 37 seconds as Oklahoma takes a 7-0 lead over Kansas State here in Norman. Rattler, the consensus number one quarterback in the 2019 recruiting class, a five-star prospect, had offers from Alabama, Notre Dame, Miami. And he committed to OU one week after visiting. Listen, I mean, look at Lincoln Riley's track record of success, right? I mean, it's a pretty easy choice. Burkett sends it away. Joshua Youngblood, the deep man, and he'll take a knee in the end zone. So coming up, Skyler Thompson and the Wildcats with their hands full. Back on the field, down 7-0. Welcome back to Gaylord Family, Oklahoma Memorial Stadium, which opened in 1923. Capacity 80,126, only 25% capacity today. First down and 10 of the 25. For Kansas State, Skyler Thompson, the lead man for the Wildcats. Deuce Vaughn, deep man in the I formation for K-State. 
Thompson to throw on the straight drop back under pressure. Let's it go and incomplete. Joaquin Gill, the intended receiver. Meanwhile, time to join the third member of our team on the sideline, the All-American girl, Jenny Tatt. Well, guys, I know you like saying his name, Deuce Vaughn, and K-State has high expectations for the freshman running back. I chatted with him earlier this week, and he told me that coming to K-State really was all about a team that was going to use his strengths to his best ability. Now, he and his dad, who is currently a, co a scout for the Cowboys, said they've called his size a superpower. He's 5'5". Five, five. He said, I've always been the smallest guy in the field. It's never stopped me before. And they'll pitch it out wide, Vaughn. Falls on the football, took his eyes off of it, but in their first game, he became the first ever Kansas State true freshman to score a touchdown in a season opener. Yeah, and, and listen, he's got great talent, but you have to be creative in the way that you get him the ball. They tried there on a little toss. It hits the ground. Fortunate for Kansas State that it bounced right back to him. This is the situation that they were in constantly in their opening game against Arkansas State. They cannot sit here and be in third and obvious all day long. A lot of pressure on Skyler Thompson here with a brand new offensive line to try to find someone down the field. Third down and 13 at the 22. Here's Thompson. Under pressure, guns it away. Moore with the catch, leaps forward, gets to the 30 as he's upended by Delarian Turner Yell. Well, that's just a frustrating series there for Kansas State. After they give up a score, they want to try to stay on the field, give their defense a bit of rest, find some points. And credit to OU's defense. They flew around, created pressure in the face of Thompson on that second down play, and then get off the field on third down, riling, uh, rallying up, excuse me, to make the tackle there on Briley Moore. Zentner will stand at the 15, and Marvin Mims, the deep man for OU at the 30. Actually make it Jack Bloomer now in the punt for Kansas State. Timeout. Kansas State, their first of the half. It'll be 30 seconds in duration. All right, we'll step away. Fourth down and six here in the first quarter. OU up seven zip. Bloomer at the 15, ready to punt for Kansas State. Marvin Mims standing around his own 30. Mims comes up. He's bumped. And the ball recovered at the 24. And this will go against Kansas State. The ruling on the field is that the ball was illegally touched by the kicking team. It'll be Oklahoma's ball at that spot, first down. Media timeout. Boy, it was tough to see exactly who touched that ball first, but looks like OU's going to be first and ten. All right, coming up, Spencer Rattler back on the field for Lincoln Riley, up seven to nothing. Big Note Saturday is sponsored by Wendy's new pretzel bacon pub cheeseburger. Welcome back. Spencer Rattler threw a touchdown on his second series of this game to give Oklahoma a 7 to nothing lead. Now they'll start first down and 10 at the 26, and it's Pledger with all sorts of running room. He'll pick up seven and a half. Maybe eight, A.J. Parker with the tackle for K-State. Looks like they're going to get a hold, though. Holding offense number 81, 10-yard penalty, replay first down. Braden Willis playing that tight end position. He was coming in from the left side of the offense. And watch as he goes in, and he's, he's blocking there. Just hands around Justin Hughes, number 32, and a quick hold that pops Pledger for a few more yards. So excellent call there. He's going to back OU up and create a first and long. So first down and 20 now for Lincoln Riley's Oklahoma Sooners. 
How about Lincoln Riley? 36 wins in his first three seasons, the most by a major college coach through his first three seasons since George Woodruff of Penn, who won 39 over 125 years ago, Joel Clark. Yeah, I mean, he's he's obviously a remarkable coach. There's there's no doubt about it. And he's been in the playoff every single year as, as a head coach. And in order to do that, though, it's not all his doing you have to be handed the keys to a great program and so a lot of that is also Bob Stoops and what he was able to build in particular in those last few years of his tenure and what he handed Lincoln Riley here in the morning. Rattler over the middle and he delivers Braden Willis with the grab. Well makeup catch there right? Yes. Get the holding call in the previous play they go right back to him excellent throw from Rattler and Willis moves the chains for the Sooners. So 20-yard pickup, first down at the 38. Pledger shaking, spinning. Nice run by T.J. Pledger. Justin Gardner finally brings him down. Nice run, tough run, spinning. Remember, Pleasure did not play in their first game, but now he's getting his shot to be on the field, and you see that covering up the ball, spinning off of some of those initial hits. Pleasure missed the first four games of the 2019 season with a hand injury. They go up top. Oh, boy, that ball deflected and almost intercepted. What a play design here. First, Rattler threw it out to Charleston Rambo, then, and it was a little backwards pass, and then Rattler just kept moving right down the field, and it just goes off of his hands. Unable to bring it down, and now all the wide receivers are going to get to go back to their quarterback and be like, hey, man, I put it on your hands. you got to catch that ball. <laughs> so Lincoln Riley creative here in this first quarter. Ran a reverse on the first play of the game. Trying to keep Kansas State off balance. I didn't hear a, a flag announced. I don't understand. They say it's first and 15. From the 46. Rattler drops it off. Mims. Mims will get inside. Kansas State Territory chopped down at around the 48. Hughes with the tackle. Again, we didn't hear an announcement. Didn't see a flag, Gus. So I don't. I don't know why all of a sudden it was that double pass was negated. It went first and 15. So now second and 10. Kind of an odd series here. Rattler fires wide open. Once again, it's Marvin Mims. And he's down at the Kansas State 15, but a flag on the play. We're starting to see a star born here on the outside. I said they might not have that superstar like C.D. Lamb, but they think this guy is the next one, Marvin Mims. You see his ability to get open in the back end and a little shaking up there after the play. Marvin Mims holds the national record for having caught 2,629 yards worth of passes as a senior and a Texas State record for receiving yards in a career, 5,485. That's where those numbers are ridiculous. 5,400 and I mean, after 5,000, it's just like a lot. <laughs> What'd you go for? A lot. There are two fouls on the play, one on each team. Ineligible player downfield, offense number 53. Face mask, defense number 19. Penalties offset, will we play second down. Mim still being looked at on the Oklahoma sideline. Looks like he may be in a little bit of pain. That's one of the problems when you get that big kind of RPO style action, run pass option action, and then if the quarterback has to hold the ball for a beat, the offensive line is just blocking the run play, and they can sneak down the field a little too far remember that three yard barrier in college football that's what happened on the last play and the face mask at the end second down and 10 of the 48 yard line rattler steps up in the pocket trying to buy time and kansas state ready for him this time as they bottled him up and bring him down leading the way kamari janus 
Well, they need some pressure, but it started with the coverage here. This banged up secondary did a great job. Nobody open initially. No separation. Great coverage there on the left side. And even though you might see a little space here, maybe he could have gotten the ball to Rambo. Great job on the underneath zone by Hughes, just sitting right under it. And Rattler had to eat it. Loss of two on the play. Third down and 12 in midfield. Badger handing out, uh, running it rather left. As you get outside, flag on the play. Jerome McPherson defensively for K-State. Holding. Offense number 18. Danielle Kingsley from the side of the five. There's Stogner, this tight end group. I'm a, a tough goal of it. He's right there, 18, right in front of the play. That left hand clearly on the outside of the shoulder pad of the defensive back. And that's what allowed Pledger to get outside. So this Oklahoma team not playing very clean football right now as far as the penalties go. But let, let's face it, without an offseason like a, a spring football, a summer, uh, an interesting fall camp, obviously, with different types of practice mentalities and, and situations, we're going to see these games be a little more choppy in this respect. Third down and 16, McGowan down the sideline, and he'll step out of bounds around the 44. McPherson there to push him out of play for K-State. I think he got enough where Lincoln Riley's going to go for it. This is the spot on the field. He loves to go for it. Now he's going to quicken the tempo, get his team up to the line of scrimmage as Kansas State is trying to change their personnel and get some heavier guys on the field. Fourth down and five at the 43. Empty backfield for Spencer Rattler. Here's Rattler, sprints out of the pocket, looking, delivers to the sideline, caught first down, OU. That's a great route and a great throw as Weiss, the sophomore from Allen, Texas, makes the catch. Watch, it's just a little bit of an unintended pick play as you're going to get Rambo right up there, and he kind of bumps into the defender, A.J. Parker. It allows for the separation. Weiss is right there. Rattler says first down. Rattler, 11 of 12, 108 yards, a touchdown and an interception here in the first quarter. And that takes us to the end of the first quarter. Oklahoma leading 7 to nothing with the ball driving. Back to Norman after this. Big Noon Saturday is sponsored by AT&T Business. The Palace on the Prairie, Gaylord Family, Oklahoma Memorial Stadium. Sooners on top of the Wildcats, 7 to nothing. as we start the second quarter. Let's take a look at our team comparison sponsored by Credible. And you look at those rush yards, Kansas State, they need to start holding on to the football in their offensive possessions, three and out basically on their first two, or excuse me, over two on their third downs, and 25 plays to six. Not going to cut it. That defense is thin already. And if they're on the field for too much longer, then you start getting concerned with uh, that conditioning factor. It's not hot, but certainly not a cool day here in Norman. First down and 10 of the 32-yard line. Rattler on the play-action fake. Bounces out of the pocket. Looking. Delivers. Caught at the goal line. Touchdown, Oklahoma. Drake Stoops. And I know there is a happy mom and dad about three doors down from us right now. <laughs> There's no doubt about it. Oh, Drake Stoops, that has to feel good right there. And again, what do we see from the quarterback? Him escaping out of the pocket, buying himself some time as the coverage was initially very good. There he goes. He's outside of the pocket. Now he keeps his eyes down the field, always looking for the big play. Stoops is kind of open, but again, throws a really accurate pass to the goal line. And Stoops is able to go up, wrestle the ball away, and stick it over that goal line for a touchdown. So Spencer Rattler throws his second touchdown of the game, this time to Drake Stoops, the son of Bob Stoops, the former head coach here at Oklahoma. Burkich with the extra point. There's Coach Stoops. 
And as we told him before the game, we were talking about Drake. We said, thank goodness your son has his mother's looks and talent. <laughs> That's right. And he said, you ain't lying. <laughs> oh, man. Happy for them. I know he is so excited for Drake as Drake is putting together a nice career here. He's, he's supposed to be sharing time at the Y position, that slot receiver position with one of their grad transfers from Marshall, Obi Abiolo. And Obi is not available today, so Drake's going to get a lot of run in this ball game, and he pays it off with a huge touchdown there. And a really nice catch going up over Justin Gardner, number six, the corner for Kansas State, coming down with the ball and sticking it across the goal line. Drake's got some guns right there, Joel. Look at him. He's been in the weight room. You can tell. He's been a lot of time in there. He's been trying to flex on his dad for his whole <laughs> life, right? Right? He's been around. He's been around this program. 14 to nothing, OU. So we'll see if Kansas State can get something going. Joshua Youngblood, who's an All-American kick returner, had three touchdowns on kick returns last year, wants an opportunity. But Berkich wants to make sure that he does not touch the football. We'll try to kick this one. And Youngblood's going to bring it out. And he'll get to the 20-yard line. Good special teams coverage. As Turner Yell comes up with the tackle. I think this could be QBU, don't you, partner? I think so, too. The modern QBU, it was Baker Mayfield, 2017 Heisman Trophy winner after being in the top four every year that he started. Then Kyler in his lone year won the Heisman. Jalen Hurts last year, runner-up after transferring for, from Alabama. And now Spencer Rattler's turn uh, with the keys to the Ferrari of Lincoln Riley's offense. So first down and 10 for K-State at the 20-yard line. Tyler Burns in the backfield. They'll run it right. It's Joshua Youngblood. They're trying to get him into the act. And Turner Yell with the tackle on that left side. Youngblood is, is such a good player, in particular in space. You already mentioned those three returns for touchdown he had a year ago. He was just burst onto the scene here. He was the Big 12 Special Team Player of the Year, and trying to get him the ball is exactly what they need to do and they've got to stay on the field here and try to keep their defense on the sideline second down at seven at the 23. they hand it off to burns between the tackles and tyler burns will gain a few this is an important third down with the way their defense is playing and more importantly the rhythm that OU was able to just establish in their previous two series. You can't put this football back to Oklahoma right now. They have got to convert this third down. This is an imperative conversion here. They're 0 for 2 so far. Skylar Thompson's got to step up and make a quality throw. But more importantly, his wide receivers have to win for him. Also, watch for Briley Moore, the tight end. Top of your screen, he's been a go-to guy. And some movement looks like on that Kansas State O-line. Delay a game. Defense number 24. That penalty will be five yards and result in a first down. So what, what the call there is when they call delay a game, that means Brian Osamoa was trying to bark out the, the snap count and trying to force a false start on the opposition. That's what those offensive linemen were jumping for, and so the linebacker there gets called for it, and now Kansas State gets that conversion because of the mistake, really a mental error there from Oklahoma. So K-State now first down at the 31. Vaughn in the backfield is the deep man. Thompson guns it to the sideline, and it's caught by Taylor. Shabaston Taylor, the junior from Giddings, Texas, gains about six. They talked about wanting to take advantage of what's called free access. That means that a corner is off coverage or even a slot receiver doesn't have someone right over his face. But what we've seen all day long so far from Oklahoma is these defensive backs right in the face of the wide receivers. That's what's making it difficult for them to get the ball out of their hands quickly. Second and fourth to 37, trips at the top of your screen. Vaughn looking for space. They'll lean forward and get close to the first down marker. Woody Washington, the redshirt freshman, 
making the tackle for OU. When the defense is playing this style of defense, they're getting heavy man coverage, that bump coverage from the defensive backs. The way that you get them out of that is you either have to hit them over the top, win one-on-one, -on -one, or Gus start running the quarterback. And Skylar Thompson was banged up in week one. Remember, he was successful running against OU last year, but he had a growing injury, didn't practice last week in the open week. He says he's fresh and healthy, but he needs to start getting loose. Third down and two. All start. Offense number 74. Self-inflicted wounds. And that was a problem in their week one loss to Arkansas State. That was Christian Duffy, the left tackle, with a little flinch. And that's what happens, though. You know, these guys are so inexperienced up front. They're just trying to get their feet wet playing together, and you don't have that continuity. But here's another one of those third downs. I brought up his name earlier because we saw him in that week one. Riley Moore. He's been the go-to guy. It's a tight end on the bottom of your screen. Third down and seven. Thompson looking far side. Caught, but not enough for first down. Joaquin Gill tried to make a quick turn, but he's written down by Brendan Radley Hiles. And this ball just short of the chains. Radley Hiles, good open field tacker. He just closes quickly gets him to the ground i think they've got to go for it like i said you can't just punt this football away to this offense and even in their own territory here in the second quarter is a big moment for kansas state offensively got to move the chains here and they'll go for it on fourth down so they need a yard remember thompson's a big fella 6'2 223 all fourth and one the tackle jumped again they're having such a hard time with the snap count And you can't say it's because of crowd noise, right? <laughs> Full start. Offense number 63. Five-yard penalty. Fourth down. Here's what's yeah. happened. Watch Noah Johnson as he looks back for the leg kick, and then when he picks his head up, that's when Duffy jumps. You see, that's what's causing the French. So he sees his center move, and he thinks his center is going to snap the football. And he just leans out of his stance ever so slightly. And now they're going to have to punt it away. I think this is the right choice here at fourth and six. Marvin Mims, Charleston Rambo, both deep. As Zentner back in the punt. This ball fielded at the 23 by Mims. And he's tripped up and goes down. 14 to nothing, Oklahoma. Spencer Rattler and the Sooners offense back on right after this. Today's matchup is featured on the free-to-play Fox Bet Super 6 app. One of the questions in the contest was, who will be leading at the end of the first half? And 93% of Super 6 users chose Oklahoma. One reason, this young man, Spencer Rattler, redshirt freshman, Phoenix, Arizona, Pinnacle High School. Having a good day so far as he hands it off to Pledger. Could lead Duke making the tackle. You know, he had three incompletions in that first game that he started. And two were flat drops. The other was basically just kind of a heave at the end of the half. He's got one today. It was that tip ball that went for an interception. Seven completions. His first seven today were to seven different receivers. So even as a young player, guys, he's not locked into one guy. He understands how to use the system and, and move the ball around. Bradler to throw it over the middle, and he has his man again for a first down. Stockner has found a soft spot underneath against this K-State defense. Well, and it's going to be soft all day because they've got to have those safeties back. Remember, I keep talking about this. They've got to protect their corners with their safeties deeper, and so the middle of the field will be open. Rattler up the sideline. Oh, what a play. And intercepted Justin Gardner. Just pulls it down. What a play from Gardner. Underthrown from Rattler and Gardner even getting pulled on by the freshman Mims goes up and takes it away. Second interception of the day for the Kansas State defense.
Big Noon Saturday is sponsored by State Farm. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. 14-0, Oklahoma on top of Kansas State. Big 12 opener for these two teams. But a nice intercepted by Gardner. Second turnover of the day for OU. They did look at this during the break just to see if it hit the ground or not because he didn't have control of it until right there in that right arm. What an amazing play by Gardner. First down at 10 of the 35, Vaughn. And Deuce Vaughn. Heavy lifting for him here in the first half. Trey Norwood, first man to him. Uh, and, and the big thing last year was that they converted the turnovers. Oklahoma had two turnovers, and they converted them to points, 14 points. But those were both short fields. This one's a, a little bit lengthier, but they've got to start taking advantage here, stay on the field offensively. And part of that is that they're going to have to protect their passer, and he's going to have to start making some plays in the pass game. Second down and nine from the 36. Thompson, play fake. Rick Tom, Thompson, dumps it down, and it's caught by Burns. And the senior knocked out of bounds. Tyler Burns from Wichita, Kansas. Ryan Mead defensively for OU. You know, this, this defense is playing well, and they are fast. And they might be a little undersized for what you would want at the top end of college football, but this is a group that is experienced, in particular in the back end. They're trying to get their footing up front with a few of the junior college transfers, but this is the question for Oklahoma is can their defense rise up? And these are the types of plays that they've got to be great. Third down at six at the 39. Thompson drops it off and it should be a first down for K-State. Looks like they got enough as Joaquin Gill leans forward, but he may be short. And it is going to be fourth down, but I think this is an easy decision for all the things I was just talking about. Got to stay on the field. Chris Kleiman, the head coach, will go for it here. Last time on fourth down, they had a false start and had to punt it away. So first things first, no penalties for Kansas State. Got to move the chains here. Deuce Vaughn in the backfield with Skyler Thompson. They run the option. Thompson, he picks up the first down. Gets to midfield. Skyler Thompson, remember, last year in Manhattan, he rushed for four touchdowns. Yeah, and a great job on the edge. Check out the tackle here. As he's going to get that hook block, probably more of the tight end, he gets his hook block. And then that allows Thompson to read that pitch, man. He went out with the running back, slips a tackle, and gets the conversion. Really good execution there on the edge of the offensive line by Christian Duffy and Briley Moore. 7.30 to play in the first half. First and 10 of the 49 for K-State. Burns. Regain a yard. Yard and a half on the play. Now, baseball's postseason is coming, and in just 10 days, FS1 will be your home for the National League Divisional Series. It all gets underway on October 6th. The NLDS on FS1 and the Fox Sports app. Can anybody beat the Dodgers? I don't think so. I'll tell you what, man. I know when I come back, I want to beat Mookie. <laughs> How good is he? Oh, man, is he terrific. Second and seven at the 48. Play fake, Thompson with an open receiver, and it is caught. Nicely done. Samuel Wheeler, the sophomore receiver, with the grab, and it's a 17-yard gain. Woody Washington defensively. They're going to get a, a clear out from Briley Moore, the tight end. Watch as now the de defensive secondary. They all retreat, and then boom, there's... 19 open wide open Sammy Wheeler on a little bit of a wheel route like a skinny wheel route and Thompson was able to find him before he got the pressure from Brendan Radley Hiles First down of the 31 Burns and Vaughn in the split backfield and they run the reverse and Oklahoma's right there Great job Phillip Brooks on the reverse And the Sooners Nick Benito with the tackle. Check him out. This is beautiful play. He sees it going away, but he doesn't go anywhere except where his responsibility is. He knows that he just needs to sit there for anyone coming back the other way, and he was 
in the perfect position to make that tackle for loss. A loss of eight on the play. Second and 18 at the 39. Toss is going to have to let this ball fly now. Here he is. All day to throw it. Packs up. Delivers a strike. Malik knows. Oh, he couldn't hang on. A couple of weeks ago against Arkansas State, Malik Knowles made one of the best catches you'll ever see. And that one dropped right in his arms and he couldn't hold on. Yeah, I, I mean, they have got to connect on this. Malik Knowles is wide open and they protected Thompson really well. He is wide open. If the ball is up on his chest and affording him to run, he's going to run for a touchdown. Look at all that space out there. And the ball's a little behind him and short, and Thompson misses him. Knowles can't come back and make the catch. That is a critical error for the Wildcats. Third down and 18 at the 39. And a timeout, Kansas State. We'll take a break. Second timeout by the Wildcats. Celebrating Fansville, sponsored by Dr. Pepper, the official drink of Fansville. So Skyler Thompson, K Straight trying to do something to head into the locker room to feel good about themselves. Third and 18 at the 39. Here's Thompson. Delivers a deep ball with the receiver. Caught. Touchdown, Kansas State. Jabaston Taylor. What a great route. He got some space, and finally Thompson's able to connect down the field, and they had great protection up front. Thompson able to read it. And then Taylor goes up the ladder, and then did he get in? It looked like he might have been rolling over the defender. Hand does not equal a knee, and then it looks like he's in the end zone for a touchdown. Did anything touch? No, it doesn't look like it. What a great call by the officials. That is a touchdown, Kansas State. And finally, the Wildcats hit one of these deep passes. We saw them miss several against Arkansas State in that game, and now they connect and look to... There it is. Extra point up and good. Shebastian Taylor makes it a 14-7 game. Kansas State responded. Big Noon Saturday is sponsored by Allstate. So Kansas State, nine plays, 65-yard drive. They eat up four minutes and 37 seconds, including a fourth down conversion by Thompson and TD on a play after a missed TD opportunity. But I guess if you are Coach Chris Kleiman, you got to go for things in games yeah. like this. Yeah, you do, and, and that, was a, that was a great series for them because they've been statistically dominated so far, but they get that interception, and then they turned it into points right away and cut that lead in half for Oklahoma. So nice throw from Skyler Thompson to get him on the board. Rambo, the deep man for OU. And he will not get an opportunity to return it. Meanwhile, let's head to Los Angeles and check in with Rob Stone. All right, Gus, thank you. Coming up on the State Farm Halftime, the lane train makes its first oldest <laughs> stop in Gainesville. That scoreline may surprise you. Kentucky, Auburn, they tangle in the SEC's lone ranked matchup. Plus, how eighth-ranked Texas can surpass Oklahoma. Joel, Gus, we'll see you guys at the break. All right, Stoner, thank you very much. Been a very interesting first half. Rattler has thrown two interceptions in the first half. For OU. Keeping Kansas State in this game. Seth McDowell straight ahead. Elijah Sullivan defensively. His only two incompletions are those two interceptions. And the first one was a batted ball at the line of scrimmage, so you just kind of shake that off as a quarterback. I'm interested to see how he bounces back in this series because that, that last interception was a really poor throw that he tried to make down the field, and Justin Gardner picked him off. First down at the 37, two interceptions, but two touchdowns in the first half for Spencer Rattler. 
Rattler handing it off. McGowan trying to cut it back. Somebody lost a shoe. It's like it is McGowan who lost his wheel. In this running back room, these guys are talented, but remember, they're dealing with all sorts of, they've got a suspension in Ramadre Stevenson. Trey Sermon transferred to Ohio State. Kennedy Brooks opted out of the season, and Jalen Hurts is gone. Those were the four leading rushers from a year ago. Second down and four, Rattler. Composure delivers to the sideline. And the first down, Weiss. Theo Weiss, the sophomore from Allen, Texas. And, and Weiss is one of those guys that he came in as that, that trio of great wide receivers a year ago that were true freshmen. We're not seeing a couple of them. Trajan Bridges is suspended. Jaden Hazelwood has been banged up and, and is injured. But Weiss is a really quality player and I think could have a bright future here at OU. First down, Pledger. Pledger. Stopped by Drew Wiley. Pledger played in 11 games in 2018 and rushed for 179 yards, 91 of them against Kansas State. You can see Lincoln Riley trying to help his quarterback calm down. What are they doing? Because they're getting to that run game. They're trying to let that offensive line establish the rhythm here as we get towards halftime. Second and four to 39. Far side caught. First down for Oklahoma. Theo Weiss again. So the bottom line for Oklahoma is if they don't win the national championship, it's not a good season. <laughs> well, how do they finally push through under Lincoln Riley and win a national championship? Which the college football playoff last year got blown out by LSU. Yeah, and listen, that LSU team was, you know, maybe the best college football team that any of us have, have ever seen. I think it really starts and stops with their defense, and we, we can get into that more in the second half of the way they need to improve and in what areas. Rattler rolling out of the pocket, throws on the move, and it's caught by Marvin Mims. Because we know that their offense is is, is going to produce. It's, it's just it's going to happen, right? Lincoln Riley, and I've said this before, I believe he's the best offensive coach in college football. And that's proven out statistically. And the way they put guys into the NFL and their quarterback play, the efficiency of their quarterback play, that's going to be there. So the question then just becomes about their defense and whether their defense can rise to the level of a national championship defense. And it's McCown. Up another first down. OU has not won a national championship since 2000. Elijah Sullivan, Justin Hughes combining. Five straight Big 12 titles. Like McGowan. I like him a lot. You can see his explosiveness. Good vision, finds the weak spot, the little seams, and then explodes. He's able to move the chains there. First down at the 21. 14 to 7. Running game again, McGowan. Look at it, push the pile forward. Remember, he's a freshman from Mesquite, Texas. Excuse me, from Dallas Mesquite Poteet High School. This wants to go over to the right side. Look at it. He finds that cutback lane, and then he just tries to get physical. And as Kansas State is fighting for the ball, he just continues to move forward and move forward. He weighs 210 pounds, so he's still a, a big guy. 5'11", 210 pounds as a true freshman. Ran for over 3,700 yards in his high school career there in Texas. Second down and three. Pledger. And another first down. Oklahoma really just... Smash mouth football right now for the Sooners with a minute and change remaining in the second quarter. Yeah, and they're letting this offensive line eat a little bit. And, and I got to tell you, one of the guys in on this series where Lincoln Riley wants to establish the O line is a true freshman. Number 53, Anton Harrison, is in at left tackle. He's 6'5, 330 pounds, one of the best young offensive linemen in America. First down and goal at the nine. Rattler, touchdown OU, Marvin Mims again. Sooner's very methodical on that drive, partner. 
established by that offensive line, but then you're going to get the route here from Mims. He just sticks that little slant, gets across the face of the defender, way too much cushion there from the defensive back. Rattler, a token fake to the running back, Pledger, and then he knows he's going right for that slant, and Mims is in for a touchdown. Boy, he is a talented player, and this offense, led by the offensive line on that series, like you said, methodically down the field and wind up in the end zone. Mims is third touchdown of the year, second of the day. Burkich with the extra point, and with 44 seconds remaining in the first half, Oklahoma takes a 21-7 lead over Kansas State. Seven, Oklahoma leading Kansas State. Long drive for them, 11 plays, 83 yards. And they use four minutes and 37 seconds. Mims already four catches, a couple of TDs. Haven't had the big one like he had in their first game, but boy, he looks good, doesn't he? Certainly does. Especially to be a freshman. Sort of sent it away. Youngblood wants a shot at it. And he'll get one from the six. And ridden out of bounds at the 20. Tomorrow, we've got a huge doubleheader on Fox. First, the Bears take on the Falcons or other regional action that Dak and Zeke. Lead the Cowboys against Russell Wilson and the Seahawks in America's Game of the Week. Check local listings for the game in your area or watch it on the Fox Sports app. How about Russell Wilson through five Ooh. touchdown passes against a Bill Belichick coach team? The last time that happened was 2009. Drew Brees threw five TDs against Coach B. So pretty good company Russell Wilson is keeping, and, and he looks like... He's going to make a push for that MVP this year, doesn't he? I mean, he's just playing on that level. Sensational. First and 10 at the 19 for K-State. And it's a movement. Boy, again, th this this offensive line just not on the same page. Noah Johnson just well, didn't sorry. snap it. Both guards on started to pull out multiple the Multiple players. Five-yard penalty. Still first down. Multiple players. And don't forget, the Big Noon Halftime Show, sponsored by State Farm, is standing by at the half with Rob Stone, Brady Quinn, Reggie Bush, Matt Leiter, and Coach Urban Meyer. Coach Meyer really settling into this TV gig he is now. Yeah, so, you know, he's, he's, he's looking more like comfortable. A, yeah, he walks around like a TV star. That's right, that's right. Huh? <laughs> Sitting on the desk with his coat yeah, open, not yeah. even buttoned up. It's, he it's have like we're in his living room. Yeah, I got three national championships, man. How many, how, many, how many you got? That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Here's Burns. And he can't get around the corner. Asamoa tracking him. All things considered, though, if you're Kansas State down 21 to 7, you don't feel too bad about yourself as you're heading into the locker room. Well, in particular because the stat sheet would suggest that it's worse than that. Right? You know, Oklahoma's out gaining Kansas State right now 289 yards to 98. And they're looking to just get into the half here and not have to put the ball in harm's way. And I think Oklahoma's going to allow them to do that. Lincoln Riley did not take any of those timeouts to try to get the ball back. So they will head into half. All right, 21 to 7, the score at halftime. OU on top of K State. Let's go inside the studio and Rob Stone. All right, Gus, thank you as we welcome you to the State Farm Halftime Show. Rob Stone, Matt Leinert, Urban Meyer, Brady Quinn, and Reggie Bush here with you. On Big Noon Kickoff earlier this morning, we discussed the Heisman hype surrounding redshirt freshman Spencer Rattler. So, Coach, how is the Oklahoma staff right now kind of assessing what he's been doing so far this season? It's his only his second start, and so I can imagine the coaching staff would do what most coaching staff does. You come in after each game <clears throat> and figure out what he does well. Reality is he's six foot, six foot one. That means if you're sitting in the pocket too many times, balls get tipped. So let's take a look here. His first pick of the season was he's in the pocket. He's a smaller guy. The defensive line starts to pass rush. Hands up, the ball gets tipped. And you can see next play is going to be a fourth and five call. What does this guy do well? He breaks a pocket. He's got a hose, great release, fourth and five. I expect to see as the season progresses more and more break contains. His two touchdown passes were both out of the pocket scrambles. So I can see, right. once again, the coaching staff is still working the kinks out with him. I mean, he's doing great. They, what a talent. 
but you're going to see him start to break the pocket more and more. They may have to with their protection a little bit at times, too. It seemed like that left tackle spot, Swenson started, Harrison came in, doing a better job running, but pass pro might be a work in progress. What I loved about Spencer Rattler from the first half, it's the first time he's dealt with adversity, right? You know, all the hype, the expectation. Mm -hmm. He throws a couple interceptions, and we heard Joel uh, Klatt talk about how would he respond. Well, this is right after the first interception, which was unlucky tip ball. He leads him to a touchdown drive. The next drive, it's another touchdown pass. And get, again, Coach, to your point, a lot of getting uh, out of the pocket, thrown on the run, and obviously letting the playmakers make a play. Then he throws this poorly thrown football. He underthrows a go route. Joel Klatt said, how do you respond your next series? Will you go on a 10-play drive and throw your third touchdown pass? He's mature. He's got a lot of moxie for him. I'm happy this is happening because this is conference play. This is yeah. what's going to happen throughout the season. And on the opposite side of the football, I think the defense is playing really well. Under Alex Grinch, second year, they're making the kinds of tackles that we need to see good football teams make. This one right here, the linebacker, Deshaun White, is just spying on the quarterback. Does a great job coming up and making a solid tackle. And then here on third and seven, not allowing the offense to complete the first down. And then on a reverse the trickery play, they stayed home. They, they made the tackle. But these are the kinds of plays, if, if we talk about uh, can Oklahoma, are they built to win a national champ championship? These are the kind of plays that good football teams make. So if they continue to make these kinds of plays, I think they'll be able to. So, to, so are you to, buying to this defense? Right. Is that what you're saying? I'm buying what I'm seeing right now. Okay. I want to see more of it. I'm saying I like what I'm seeing. It just needs to be consistent. Yep. First time since 1999 that Oklahoma has started a season shutting out their opponent through the first five quarters. They had that touchdown that they allowed, but they are up comfortably 21-7 at the break. Well, it is week one of SEC play, and all aboard the lane train. The lane train <laughs> made his old Miss debut as they took on Florida, and this one is creating some early headlines. It's also the first time since 1955 that Kentucky and Auburn have met as ranked teams. How's Bo Nix faring in year two on the Plains? I didn't think I would make the cut. I didn't think I would persevere. I didn't think I was athletic enough, talented enough, strong enough. I didn't think I was enough. I didn't think I could dance. Until I did. What will you do? Welcome back to the State Farm Halftime Show. Second quarter, Spencer Rattler to Drake Stoops. Yes, you know that last name. That made it 14-0. It's now 21-7 at the half. Florida, they have not won the SEC since 2008. Urban feels they have the talent to get back to that level, particularly if Kyle Trask goes from good to great. Gators on the road taking on Lane Kiffin and Ole Miss. Love those baby blues with Ole Miss. Here's Kyle Trask. We're talking about a year ago, really good in the red zone, 17 touchdowns, already getting off to a good start this season. The key will once again be for the, the Gators to go from good to great. Their quarterback has to go good to great. He has three touchdowns, no picks in the first half. Looks really good against a, a stout a Ole Miss defense. Trask again. You know, Ole Miss is keeping this close, though. Ontario Drummond, he's got a couple catches. You big, big pass, it. too. You said, dude. We'll, we'll see. keep it close. A lot of game left. A lot of game left. <laughs> Number 23, Kentucky at eight, ranked Auburn. First quarter. Smoke. Cavassier, smoke. Smokes the Tigers. <laughs> first of all, <laughs> best name of that's football. the best name in football right there. Cavassier, smoke. Yeah, I mean, you had me at Cavassier. You had smoke to it. <laughs> yeah, what's he drinking? I'm thinking, uh, that's my Saturday night. <laughs> <laughs> Bo Nix, 6 of 11, 90 yards. Louisville on the road at unbeaten Pittsburgh. 2-2 two -two at well. 2-2. Two -two. defense. Oh, defense a breakdown. Mm -hmm. This is a fun one. Later in the second quarter, Kenny Pickett, Taser Mack. I'll tell, you, I'll tell you what. I know who loves Kenny Pickett. This guy. Right yeah. over here. Oh, I'm telling you, that this, this young man, keep your eye on him. Mack's a big playmaker for him, but Kenny Pickett. You're going to be hearing that name, I think, when he decides to leave school yeah, early in the draft. A couple touchdowns. Got to the tackle. He never touched the ground. Got Pittsburgh the up three. 13th ranked UCF on the road taking on East Carolina. 
Oh, stiff arm. Darius, man. Mm. Man, you love those stiff mm. arms, man. Yeah, man. That's a weapon right there. You, you like me? stiff arms or Aussie bowls more? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you can answer the question. Yeah, yeah. Both. Uh, I yes. like both. I like both. 13-7 <laughs> game. Sam Ellinger in Texas looking to make their first ever playoff appearance, but are they good enough to leapfrog the Sooners? We discussed that one coming up next. Money back. <laughs> hey, man, we getting out of control with these turnovers. So, uh, this is a turnover money bag. She was just your money bag. So money bag. Around it's a old turnover mix. money bag. Coach. Come on, Lane. <laughs> Come on, Lane. You cheer for us on the field. Now, now cheer for us beyond it. Hear the voices of black, black Americans. Americans. We cannot change the past, but we can protect the future. Hear the voices. Hear the voices of our family, of our friends, and allies. It takes all of us, black, white, everyone, to do the honest, uncomfortable work of rooting racism out. Together, we can mend what has been broken. Differences can no longer divide us, but we can protect the future. The future is now. Be the change. Be the change. Be the change. And raise your voice. United, we will rise. It takes all of us. Stand up. Raise your voice. Welcome back to the State Farm Halftime Show. Kickoff of Georgia Tech at Syracuse delayed about 20 minutes to confirm negative COVID tests for players before the game. Once again, welcome to 2020. Sean Tucker, first mm. quarter. Knee down. Tackle him. Knee down. Uh-uh. You got to get him down. Great effort. Great effort. And great awareness, too, by Tucker to continue to play and get up and run and score the touchdown. Winless Syracuse up 17 early stages, second quarter. Second game of our Fox doubleheader, Sam Ellinger leading Texas in the Lubbock to take on Texas Tech. That one, 3.30 Eastern on Fox, also available on the Fox Sports app. Now, Texas in the midst of their longest Big 12 title drought in a decade. It just happens to coincide with the recent dominance of Oklahoma. So, Coach, what needs to happen for the Longhorns to finally surpass the Sooners? Well, first, they're on their way, I think, because they made the most important and best coordinator hire of the year and Chris Ash. Chris Ash is one of the best I've been around. And, and I try to make this point as often as possible. Th Reggie, this is not the NFL. Mm -hmm. Your job is not to call plays on defense. You know what your job is? To take 17, 18, 19-year-old kids and turn them into grown men and play great defense at, at Texas. He has to do that for Texas to start taking that next step. Well, remember, it's not about calling the plays. It's about the way you practice in the offseason, teaching, tackling, all the things that I've seen Chris Ash do at an elite level. He was our D coordinator. We won the national title. He changed our whole defense. We brought in rugby tackling, and he was kind of my right-hand man in a lot of other off-the-field stuff I dealt with. My concern is in bringing him in, it's a great hire, but a cut-down offseason to implement some of that. Same thing with Mike Yurcich, their offensive coordinator. Cut-down offseason, how long does it take them to kind of get in a groove? And they're returning a lot of starters, but it's mostly linebacker safeties. And so I just, I'm concerned about the front. I'm concerned if they get pressure on a team like Oklahoma. And I think the other concern is you, you have to be worried about Texas stumbling versus a team not named Oklahoma. They've stumbled in other games throughout the course of Big 12 play. So I think that's more of my concern with them this year. I just don't think they're ready to knock off Oklahoma. I, I've got to see it to believe it. Right. I think from the game that we've seen today, from the way Oklahoma's playing, Spencer Rattler has turned the football over two times. Anything can happen in 2020. Anything can happen. I think that Texas with Sam Ellinger throwing the football, pushing the football down the field, getting through his progressions, um, leading this football team. I think he's going to be the reason why they can beat uh, Oklahoma. And, and honestly, watching this game today, I really think they can beat Oklahoma. Uh, I, they will beat Oklahoma. Um, I think it's going to happen. Yeah, I mean, they've played tough against o Oklahoma, but to Brady's point, it's just consistency throughout yeah. the conference. They're 17 and 10 under Tom Herman in Big 12 play. It's not just getting up for your rival. It's getting up for TCU, Baylor, Kansas State. Once they can show that, and that's just a mentality. That's a mentality saying it doesn't matter who's in front of us. If we want to be a championship-level team, we got to play our best every single week. They haven't proved that yet. But with Coach Ash, Ellinger, Tom mm -hmm. Herman there, the system in place, such, even without an offseason, it gives them a shot. Yeah. That's a good point. New offensive coordinator as well, Mike. You're such a uh, Ohio State feel down in Austin. Why not? You, you, 
replicate what the Buckeyes mm -hmm. are doing. Just keep in mind, all of us, that this is not the NFL. This is about college development of the athlete. And you're going to watch. I keep talking about that crystal ball. How's Texas going to be? Let's watch that draft next spring. Mm -hmm. If they start getting the players in the NFL draft the way they should, that means those two coordinators are doing a heck of a job not calling plays, developing people. Yeah. Again, Texas in action, 3.30 Eastern right here on Fox. Coming up next, second half from Norman and Rattler to Mims. You've heard it once. You've heard it twice today. Those two hooking up for two scores. 21-7 Sooners at the break. Do you hear that? It's the sound of the world waiting, listening for the next great story, that speechless moment of the next breakthrough, or reveling in the sounds of a silenced pandemic. It's the story of individuals becoming more, the chorus of the next generation. There's a world out there waiting to see what you make it. Saturday is sponsored by AT&T Business. Welcome back to Gaylord Family, Oklahoma Memorial Stadium, 21-7. OU on top of K-State as we head to the second half. Gus Johnson along with my partner, Joel Klatt. And Joel in the first half, Spencer Rattler did some good things. Yeah. He had two touchdown passes and he did some not so good things <laughs> through two interceptions. Yeah, and, and listen, one of them, I, you know, you put on his shoulders, but I do love what I see from him from a talent perspective. And as we take a look at our second half connection brought to you by AT&T Business, keeping your business connected now with 5G nationwide. This was his first touchdown pass. And Gus, he did a great job of manipulating the pocket, getting out to his left, and then Mims in the back of the end zone was able to pop open for a touchdown there he finds Drake Stoops he's able to get a touchdown pass there and then Kansas State came back after the interception the second one for Rattler they were able to go down the field cut the lead in half but Oklahoma really behind the offensive line late in that first half ran the ball methodically right at Kansas State and they were able to put up a third touchdown of the first half so the offense for Oklahoma doing its job almost 300 yards of total offense there in the first half 17 first downs but they did have the two turnovers so certainly areas to clean up for Rattler and this young offensive line for Oklahoma Spencer Rattler in that first half 17 of 19 181 yards a nice job but he had that deflection for the interception then you said the bad throw on the sideline yeah. and it's interesting right like right after that bad throw what did Lincoln Riley do K-State scores, he gives it back to the offensive line. And they kind of settled that game down late in the half, were able to drive down the field and get a touchdown. So three touchdown passes for Rattler in the first half. Let's see how he responds in the second half. K-State ready to get the football back. Burkich will send it away. Joshua Youngblood is the deep man. This ball fielded by the up back, Phillip Brooks. Brooks. Gets over the 20, up close to the 25-yard line. Turner Yell with the tackle. Let's go downstairs to Jenny Taft. Well, Gus, Coach Kleiman's first words to me were, we're battling, we're fighting, we're staying in this thing, and he's been really impressed. And we knew going into this thing, they were playing with a depleted defense, so he's liking the fight, and he said, of course, offensively, we got to take more shots downfield if we're going to stay in this thing. Now, those two turnovers were crucial for this team, and speaking of those turnovers, Lincoln Riley said it was the response from Spencer Rattler that I liked. He came back, got that touchdown, and we got to clean it up in terms of penalties. That's what Lincoln is looking for in the second half. Okay, Jenny, thank you very much. First and 10 of the 25. Thompson to throw on first down. Goes through his progressions and he finds a receiver at the 30. Riley Moore with the catch. And Thompson, 8 of 10 in that first half. 89 yards, a touchdown, no picks. But late in the half, I felt, I felt like he established a bit of a rhythm, you know, and in particular that touchdown pass to Sebastian Taylor. And 
Let's see if that kick starts them here into some more offensive success early in the second half. Second down and four at the 31. I thought their offensive line in the second quarter did a much better job pass protecting. And they're running Mosey around the corner. And he's slung out of bounds by Asamoah. Yeah, this is a young player that they're really high on. Number six, Keon Mosey, 5'7", 179 pounds from Lee Summit, Missouri. He rushed for over 2,000 yards in his prep career. And he came in there to spell Deuce Vaughn and Tyler Burns. But here's this third down now. Now it's third and manageable. They're really good in that short passing game, in particular to the slot players and their tight end, who right now is going to be flexed out. Briley Moore, he's one of the guys that Skyler Thompson really trusts. Vaughn in the backfield with Thompson. Thompson flips it out, looking for the first down. Oh, what an open field tackle. How about Brendan Bradley Hiles? Joaquin Gill had no time to make a move. He did not, and it was just excellent recognition from Bradley Hiles, who gets around the block of Bradley Moore, and he's able to get the tackle behind the line of scrimmage, wrapping up the legs. There of Joaquin Gill, that's a terrific third down stop, and it's really all about the recognition, understanding what he sees in the formation, reading his keys, and breaking on the ball immediately. Jack Bloomer sends it away. Marvin Mims, the return man for OU, and it'll be down at around the 37-38 yard line. Today's matchup is featured on the free-to-play Fox Bet Super 6 app. One of the questions in the contest was who will win the game? And 95% of Super 6 users chose Oklahoma. Oh, OU certainly has that <laughs> reputation. And this Kansas State team is just trying to fight. I'm, I'm interested to see how they can hold up defensively in the second half being so depleted. Again, if you weren't with us at the beginning of the game, just in their defensive backfield alone, they have five guys out from their two deep uh, due to injuries, COVID-related quarantine and isolation. Uh, so they're, they're playing with a patchwork defense. On first down for OU, Pledger runs into a wall on the left side as Jalen Pickle and Duke leading the way. And Duke is a, a real good player for them. And they, they really believe that Khalid Duke is going to be a future NFL player that has high ceiling potential. Rattler throws, finds Pledger out of the backfield. He splits the defense and gets close to the first down. He may have it depending on the spot. You know, there's so many talented skill position players, and, and that's why it's built for success. And that's presented by Rocket Mortgage, home loans that fit your life. Rocket can. You look at this offense for Oklahoma, and while there might not be the superstar right now, they do have a really deep skill position. I think led by Charleston Rambo, he's the 17-game starter, but then Marvin Mims, an exciting talent, and some of these backs as well. And the Sooners will pick up the first down with Pledger. Justin Hughes, middle linebacker, with the tackle. So what's new with this Oklahoma offense? You know, Lincoln Riley is so innovative with his offense. Hey, wait, wait, wait. Have you seen any new wrinkles as you watch the tape? I, I don't think it's wrinkles. I think one of the things that I've always been most impressed with about Lincoln Riley is that his offense tends to bend, not change, but bend towards the strength of his quarterback. And he's always told me, Joel, if your system is not quarterback friendly, then you need a new system. And this offense is going to look a little different because of Rattler in there. And Rattler, sack, ball comes out of his hands. Hubert getting to the quarterback. Injury timeout. Here's Hubert on the edge. And this is the motor that everybody on the K-State team talks about. He gets blocked but gets right back to him. And, and Rattler is lucky that the ball bounces back to him off the ground as Hubert knocks it out of his hand and Rattler's able to recover it right there. But really good pressure from Wyatt Hubert. 6'3", 270 pounds. And again, first team all Big 12 a year ago. He was a freshman All-America two years ago in 2018. And he's certainly a, a great player, and that's not what you want to see if you're OU, is your best offensive lineman, Creed Humphrey, being helped off the field. 
Humphrey Richard Jr. from Shawnee, Oklahoma. It's like Ian McIver is going to come in number 61. Humphrey is a surefire first round draft pick, at least in my estimation, and he is a heck of a player. So that's not the guy that you want to see banged up. Here's McIver is in at center. Second down at 15. Rattler, quick throw this time. How wide is Rambo? And Charleston Rambo picks up an extra couple of yards after the catch McPherson defensively this is when I would as a defense I would start getting creative with my defensive front looks I would start to disguise some pressure because the center is always the guy who's calling for protection and trying to ID the defensive front Gus that becomes very difficult when he got a new guy right in off the bench so here look at Kansas State everybody up in their face see the linebackers right in the face of the center this is an excellent job by the Kansas State defensive coordinator getting his guys right up in the center's face who's fresh in the game third down at 10 at the 48 Rattler over the middle caught Stodner and he's made a living running that route from both sides today and he does not pick up the fourth down but Oklahoma needs maybe a yard yeah just short of the chains they get the protection. They went right to Stogner. Good ball, but a good open field tackle there in the back end by Echo Boydo, the sophomore. So Oklahoma off fourth and one, electing to go for it. McGowan in the backfield for the Sooners. Riley wanted a timeout there from the sideline. Timeout, Oklahoma. Their first of the half. It'll be a medium break. Big Noon Saturday is presented by AT&T Business, keeping your business connected now with 5G nationwide. And is sponsored by Ram, built to serve. Oklahoma has won seven consecutive Big 12 openers right now, leading Kansas State 21 to seven. Fourth down and short. For redshirt freshman Spencer Rattler. Last time they were in that set, they went to Wildcat. Gus, remember, on a short yardage play. And Rattler with the quarterback sneak. I don't know. Boy, that was close, wasn't it? Good push by the defensive line. He needs to get to the 43-yard line. The ball needs to touch that hash mark, and I don't think it got there. I don't think they're going to give it to him. And he bobbled the snap. That's the tough part with a guy that's in the shotgun all the time, right? And, Gus, remember, it's a new center. I, you have no idea how many times Rattler has actually even taken a snap from McIver after Creed Humphrey had to leave the game earlier in the series. Especially with a shortened offseason. What a stop for Kansas State. So the Wildcats turn the Sooners away on a fourth down and short. Well, look at that. The two defensive tackles are right there. They stand the center up right right away rattler's got nowhere to go and then right after that justin hughes number 32 came in like a rocket and stopped rattler and that's an excellent stop for that defense should be noted they're without their best defensive tackle in this game as well eli huggins not available number 92 so bowing their neck up front great job design first of all sticking those two defensive tackles right in the face of the new center and then the linebacker justin hughes cleaning it up so Kansas State takes over at the 43. Decent field position for the Cats. Thompson. And Thompson sacked in the backfield. Deshaun White. 
who they feel is the next great linebacker at Oklahoma. What you're going to see here is three linemen for Kansas State end up blocking two guys for Oklahoma. That leaves a free rusher for OU, and White's able to get into the backfield, and Deshaun White, who's on the Buckus watch list this year, gets a sack, and an easy one based on that missed assignment up front. That's a loss of seven on the play, second and 17 at the 36. Thompson winds up, sideline, incomplete. No flag on the play. Intended for Taylor, Trey Brown covering. Taylor's got the height advantage. They already took advantage of it earlier in this game with that touchdown down the field. He's 6'4", 223 pounds. Trey Brown is only 5'10", but Trey Brown did a great job, Gus, of forcing him to the sideline. As a corner, you should always use the sideline as an extra defender. Force that wide receiver over there. It creates a smaller window for the quarterback to throw the football. Brown did a beautiful job of it there. Third and 17 to the 36. K-State, one of six on third down conversions. Skyler Thompson drops it off underneath, and it's caught by Bradley Moore. Moore ridden out of bounds by Pat Fields. Well, nice job here. He just pauses and then he's across the field. He's in man-to-man -man coverage there. Pat Fields has him and Fields just gets stuck on that outside shoulder and never catches back up. And Bradley Moore is able to gain positive yards there on a nice throw from Thompson. But that'll bring up fourth down and six. So Kansas State will send it away. Marvin Mims back at his own 15 for Ty Zetner. He pops this one high in the air, end over end. Takes a bounce, dies inside the 15. Nicely done by Ty Zentner. Well, our Moments of Protection is brought to you by Allstate. Get a quote today, and it was early that Young Spencer Rattler threw a couple of interceptions. This one was pretty pro throw, right? And so what did Lincoln Riley do? He went to the run game to calm him down, in particular at the end of the half, and they were able to get their young running backs going, in particular McGowan. Then here's Pledger on the nice run, and they were able to bleed the clock out and get that third touchdown. And that's our moment of protection by Allstate. So we'll see where they're able to go now as... OU is operating, Gus, without their best offensive player, Creed Humphrey, surely a first-round talent. He's their center. He just left on the last series. He's been banged up. So now it's Ian MacGyver who's in at center, and we've seen a bobbled quarterback center exchange already. And on first down, Stogner with a big catch over the middle again. Let's go downstairs and check in with Jenny. Well, obviously, guys, Creed Humphrey is looking and it appears to be trying to get back in this one. He has put two knee braces on both of his knees. He was on the ground for a long time there. He just got up, seemed to be moving pretty well. He was hydrating a ton as well, drinking a ton of electrolytes and water. But right now, he's getting situated. Two new knee braces. Looks to give it a go. All right, thank you very much. Let's hope he gets back in there quickly as McGowan breaks a tackle. He's a man running with terrific energy. Meanwhile, Stockner putting together a great day. Five catches, 83 yards for the tight end, or H-back as he's called. Personal foul, face mask, defense number 31. 15 yards added to the end of the run, first down. Now, this is a tough one here because Jaron McPherson, number 31, just flies up. He's trying to make a tackle on McGowan, the running back, and just kind of gets his hand caught in the face mask as they were fighting for extra yards. So that'll make it first down and 10 at the 38 for OU. You know, what we haven't seen OU be able to do is get the ball down the field. Those safeties have stayed deep, deeper than the deepest, wider than the widest all day long. Rattler throws it to the sideline. Caught, boy, he put that ball on the money. Theo Weiss with the reception first down OU this is exactly what I'm talking about is that the coverage was just sinking back down the field and so what's open it's just the easy flat throw to Theo Weiss and you have to credit a young quarterback because Gus at times a guy like Rattler could want to force the ball down the field but he's not 
He's trying to take what the defense gives you, and those are good lessons to learn as a young QB. A lot of dinking and dunking right now for this OU offense. Rattler handing it off to McGowan. But I like the balance that we're seeing from this Oklahoma offense in this football game. Yeah, and I think that they're being forced to do that, right? Because K-State's not giving them that explosive play down the field, so they're having to earn their way down the field via the run game, some of those dink and dunks. Uh, Kansas State trying to hold on. There's Khalid Duke. Think he may be cramping up in his calf. We'll step away back after this. And don't forget, you can find all of Joel's Breaking the Huddle content, including his weekly top 10 rankings at FoxSports.com, the Fox Sports app, and CFB on Fox social platforms. Rankings, very interesting now that the Pac-12 and the Big Ten are on their way back. That's right, uh, Big Ten for a couple of weeks now, and, and next week in the AP poll, they'll all be eligible and, and start to show up, so there'll be a little change up in the top 10 and top 25 in the country. Second and six at the 21. Rattler. Oh, in the end zone. Touchdown, Jeremiah Hall. Four touchdown passes. For young Spencer Rattler in this game. Such a long fake, a drawn out fake to try to get that secondary to bite. Watch Hall. Hall's going all the way inside. The fake's going all the way to the right. And then finally Rattler sets up to throw the football. But watch how long this fake takes place. And now Hall is down the field. Then he actually directs him out to the left before he throws a strike for a touchdown. Spencer Rattler, 23 of 25, 271 yards passing, four touchdown passes, and two interceptions. <laughs> two incompletions, but they were actually caught just by the opposition. The ball hasn't hit the ground today. <laughs> Not once. <laughs> one, thing it is, one thing when you look at him, Joel, that thing gets out of his hands so fluidly. So yes. Just quick, really quick release. And, and an effortless release. I think they're going to take another look at this just to see if Hall brought it down in the end zone. But this, I mean, this is not just like a one off game. Remember last week he only threw three incompletions and it was two blatant drops um, and, and one that he heaved down towards the end zone at the end of the half. Here's the play. Hall goes up. We'll see. There's the ball. Does he corral it? before it hits the ground. It hadn't hit the ground yet. Yeah, that looks like a catch to me. It was close, Gus, right when he hit the ground, right? You know, right when his knees go down and he certainly didn't have control, but it never actually touched the turf. And then he was able to get control there in the end zone. And, and to me, it looks like to be confirmation of that touchdown it's funny i feel like i've known spencer rattler all of his life i saw that documentary <laughs> series called qb1 right. beyond the lights right and spencer trying to give himself an early birthday present he turns 20 on monday man this tie i have After on is you, older than him. On the field of touchdown is confirmed <laughs> wait, wait. You are that old a tie? This tie is old. <laughs> That's amazing. Oh, man. Good catch there by Hall. 27 to 7. So Baker Mayfield, Kyler Murray, Jalen Hurts, now Spencer Rattler. Lincoln Riley has. Another great quarterback leading the way for him. Extra point by Burkage, and it's good. 28 to 7. The Rattler striking, coiling, and scoring for Ola. I've been waiting. Come and get me. Ain't no way you can keep up. Nah, I've been waiting. Let me see. Make them holler, make them.
Welcome back. Now, millions of kids nationwide are without their normal access to sports and play due to COVID-19. That's why Fox Sports has teamed up with Good Sports to restore play for kids and the community organizations that serve them through donations of brand new sports equipment. Visit GoodSports.org to learn more. Gabe Burkich kicks it off. Joshua Youngblood is the deep man. And Youngblood to get an opportunity up the sideline and finally take it down around the 21. Turner Yell with another tackle on special teams for OU. And when you look at this OU team and talking to their coaches this week, one thing, especially on the defensive side, they mentioned is that in the secondary, they want to get a little bit bigger. Yeah, and, and this is one of the things that I think when you look at, at the teams that are winning the national championship or competing at that, that top end, you know, they have that length in the secondary. And you look at the starting secondary for Oklahoma, you know, 5'10", 5'11", 5'9", 5'10", 5'10". And they need to get longer in that secondary if they want to go to a playoff and compete and win. First down to 10 at the 22 for Thompson. And he finds Deuce Vaughn in the open field. Deuce up the loose. Can he get there? Touchdown, Kansas State. Oh, they say he comes up short. Oh my goodness, how about the Jets from Deuce Vaughn? Here's the end. Did he stretch out and actually get in? And it looks like he was just short, maybe the half yard line for Kansas State. Really beautiful throw from Thompson. And then how about the Jets? When Vaughn saw that opening, man, he was gone. What a play there. What a great tackle by Pat Fields to deny him the touchdown. Here's a quarterback sneak by Thompson. Does it look like he got in? Man, and statistically, again, Kansas State had almost nothing going, barely 100 yards total on the day, and then lightning strikes in the form of 5-5 Deuce Vaughn, number 22. Goes 77 yards on that play. And now they're putting him back in the game. But can Kansas State pay it off? Second down and goal at the one-yard line. Vaughn, the single setback. Thompson, another quarterback sneak. And it should be a touchdown. Yes, it is for K-State. Oh, what an answer there from Kansas State. The fast strike to Deuce Vaughn. Beautiful throw from Thompson. And looks to... Pending this PAT, cut the lead in half. Here you see the good push from that offensive line. Guard center and guard Adler, Johnson, Revis. They're able to push that defensive line back just a yard, and that's all he needed. All set up by our guy, Deuce Vaughn. Deuce on the loose. Great call, partner. I'll tell you what, when you look at Kansas State and some of the players that have come through this program. Michael Bishop, Darren Sproles, Josh Freeman, Jordy Nelson, Martin Gramatica, Steve Grogan, Chris Canty, Tyler Lockett, Colin Klein, and now we may have another one. In Deuce Vaughn, the freshman from Round Rock, Texas. Extra point for Blake Lynch is good. K-State refusing to go away, 28-14. to 14. Twenty-eight to fourteen, Oklahoma, the third-ranked team in the nation, one and zero against Kansas State, who lost to Arkansas State their first game of the year. But K-State got a big play from Deuce Vaughn. Everybody in the Big 12 excited about this young man. There's no doubt. You know, you listen off like all the players, but specifically, I just think of Darren Sproles and even a guy like Tyler Lockett. You know, maybe small in stature, but made a huge impact. And this ball kicked out of the end zone. 
Let's go downstairs to JT. Well, and Coach Kleiman called Deuce a generational guy, and I love that you guys brought up the comparison to Darren Sproles. So I, of course, had to ask him about, you know, being mentioned in the same sentence, and he said, honestly, it's such an honor. I'm trying to blaze my own path, but of course, I mean, that's the kind of stuff you dream about. I've dreamed about this moment. I've dreamed about being a part of this program, K-State. It's the right fit for me, and he said, if I can just have a little bit of success that he had, that would be surreal, but right now, I'm trying to be Deuce Vaughn, so Deuce on the loose, right, guys? There you go. You know, the Darren's pros, Deuce Vaughn is a little guy. You know, he's 5'5", five, five. Darren's 5'6". Five, and, you know, Deuce has to get his weight up. He's only a freshman. Darren's pros at 190. You know? Well, I know. Uh, the 20 point goes. Oh, you're killing me, man. First I want to know if that was Darren as a senior or a freshman. Like, what was he when he came in as a freshman? Or a 10-year pro. First down and 10 at the 25. The Rattler back on the field for OU. Spencer Rattler, 23 of 25, 270 yards passing. Four passing touchdowns, two interceptions in it. I hate to say it, partner. It looks like he's not having a great day. Well, well, because it's so the, easy looking for the him. one interception wasn't great, <laughs> you know. Uh, but yeah, I mean, only two incompletions, and he's just so accurate with the football. I know that this fan base saw Sam Bradford, who I thought was one of the most accurate quarterbacks I'd ever seen. But Rattler seems to be in that category. Rattler, that ball incomplete, intended for Marvin Mims. And as you mentioned at the top of our broadcast, the comparison that you're seeing with Spencer Rattler is a guy by the name of Patrick Mahomes who played at Texas Tech. Yeah, and, and the caveat the being... Interference, defense, number 26. Ball will be placed at the spot of the foul. Automatic first down. Yeah, so we got a pass interference there. A little grab at the tail end of that. That's Will Jones in coverage on Marvin Mims. And you can see he got way too much there. A little grab pulls that himself even. And in that line. comparison, I was... I'm old enough to have been around, even though it wasn't a long time. I saw Pat early in his career in Lubbock, and he was just a hyper-talented guy, right? Now, he probably can throw for more angles than Rattler, but it's the same type of pop out of their arm. Mims tackled at the line of scrimmage by A.J. Parker. And you just find it amazing that Pat Mahomes can come into the NFL and be the MVP as a rookie and didn't win the Super Bowl and become the MVP of the Super Bowl the next year. Yeah. It's just amazing. Well, he had that one year to sit, you remember. That's and, right. And I think that was really beneficial for him. Um, behind Alex Smith, I believe it was that, that year. That ball thrown a little wide to Theo Howard. Yeah, that's that is a timing throw. You got to really be on the same page to connect on that back shoulder fade. And Theo Howard missed most of those winter workouts because he had an Achilles injury. Howard is a grad transfer from UCLA. Uh, he did have a team high five catches in the opening week against Arkansas State. But sometimes you get a young quarterback and a wide receiver that's been banged up in the offseason and they just don't have that connection in particular on that back shoulder fade, which is such a timing throw. Third down to nine at the 44. Rattler. I think Riley took a timeout. And he did. Prior to the snap, timeout. 30 second timeout. Back in the middle. Three thirty-six to play in the third quarter. Oklahoma with a 28 to 14 lead over Kansas State. The Big 12 opener for these two teams. How about this third down opportunity for K-State, Gus, after they cut the lead in half, two possession game now, and their defense, as depleted as it is, they've got a defensive tackle out, they have five guys in the secondary in the, in the two deep that are out today, and here's a great chance on a third and long to maybe get off the field and get the ball back for the offense, which has played much better over the course of their last two or three possessions. Austin Stogner has been the go-to man in these situations for Rattler. Stockner's at the top of your screen. Had a lot of success running that slant route. Here's Rattler. Steps up. Looking. Delivers. Caught. Drake Stoops. Here's 
goes Drake Stoops. Still on the move. Drake Stoops down at the five. And they're not booing, folks. They're stupid. They wanted this out route right here. And look, the defense jumps on it, and Stoops is wide open. It took Rattler a little bit to find him. If he would have let him down the field, Stoops would have had his second touchdown of the day. But as it is, he gets all the way down to the five-yard line. Huge catch on a big third down there for the Sooners. There's a proud pop of Bob Stoops in watching his son on the field getting major playing time. Already has a touchdown in this game. First down and goal at the five. OU knocking on the door. They hand it off. McGowan, touchdown Sooners. Seth McGowan, the freshman from Dallas, punches it in, and Oklahoma takes a 34-14 lead. You get Tyrese Robinson and you get Adrian Ely pulling around from their guard tackle. This is kind of bread and butter for Oklahoma. Great second level block right here. Look up there. That's the freshman. That's Anton Harrison who went up to the second level to get the linebacker and then McGowan with the strength at the goal line to get it across for a touchdown. Burkic in to attempt the extra point and it's good. 35-14. Oh, OU. Coming up next on Fox, the Big 12 rivalry takes center stage in the Lone Star State as Sam Ellinger leads Texas against Texas Tech. Catch all the action next on Fox and the Fox Sports app. And Joel, it seems like just yesterday Sam Ellinger was came in the college at Texas and started as a freshman. I don't know. You say yesterday. I feel like he's been in college for a decade. As <laughs> so long as you've won that tie that you were talking about. Uh, listen. I'm high on Ellinger and, and on Texas, for that matter. And I know OU fans aren't going to want to hear that, but that's a really good football team uh, that we'll see maybe next week, certainly in Red River. And in large part, I'm high on them because of the experience and quality at that quarterback position with Sam Ellinger. Let's check in with Jenny once again. Well, just something for you guys to keep an eye on. Unfortunately, Skylar Thompson does seem to be dealing with a bit of a right calf injury. Just something he's been nursing on the sideline. I can tell he's been trying to keep loose and moving around, stretching a bit. And remember, he had that groin injury in that loss to Arkansas State. He didn't practice a little bit after that week before the bye. So the senior QB trying everything to make an impact for his team. He told us before the year he wanted to give it his all in this last go. He's fighting through. All right. You can see that he has a... Slight hitch in his gate. First down from the 25 for K-State. Ball start. Offense on the 69. Five-yard penalty. Still first down. It's Noah Johnson. Johnson's their center who left the game early in that first week with a wrist injury, and he's been in all day today. But they've had a problem with the cadence and, and those false starts all day long. Multiple times they've been knocked back five yards for that. First down at 15. Thompson rolling. And Phillip Brooks, the intended receiver, incomplete pass. Looked like Turner Yell was trying to defend. Radley Hiles was trying to get in there as well. Just came up a bit short, and Thompson was having to get away from pressure that was coming right up the middle against that offensive line. He was trying to move out to his right and just couldn't get enough on the throw. Remember, as Jenny mentioned, he has tweaked his calf muscle. Second down at 15 at the 20. So he's trying to fight through it. Thompson. All day to throw the football. Throws deep. Caught. Beautiful throw. Great grab. Mosey down the sideline. And he's out of bounds. Inside the five. 
Kia Mosey knocked out of bounds by Pat Fields. I mean, the, just a total blown assignment. I believe that's Brian Meade, a linebacker. He's out on the running back. Mosey, but Mosey just goes right down the field. No one goes with him. Thompson found some time and is able to get it to Mosey. And then Brian Mead can't make the tackle. And there he's gone all the way down inside the five. Second straight possession that we've seen a huge play from Kansas State. And they got away with a bit of a face mask there. Speaking of OU, great run from Mosey after the catch. First down and goal to the two-yard line. And a timeout. Back after this. Thirty-five, fourteen. Deuce Vaughn in the backfield now for Kansas State. Thompson runs it. Thompson uses that big frame touchdown. Wildcats. They will not go away, just will not be denied. As shorthanded as they are on defense, even on offense, several players out. They are just hanging around. Here are just a quarterback power. And he's able to power his way into the end zone. Jenny told us he's been nerfing a bit of a cap injury so far today. It did not look like it on that play as he gets himself into the end zone for Kansas State. Second straight possession that has ended with a Skyler Thompson rushing touchdown. How often did Colin Klein score touchdowns like that when he was a quarterback? <laughs> all, all the time. Skyler Thompson using that 6'2", 223-pound frame to get into the end zone and make it a 35-21 game. Boy, just big plays have killed OU's defense. Three of them for Kansas State have accounted for over half of their yards. Meanwhile, let's go to Los Angeles and check in with Rob Stone for a game break. Gus, over on FS1 right now, winless Iowa State at TCU and the Cyclones just 50 yards of total offense until this run by Brees Hall. 75 yards, 7-0 Iowa State in the second. They're trying to bounce back from that loss to Louisiana in their opening week. TCU in their opener. So Cyclones, who were originally ranked to start the season, trying to get back into that form there for Matt Campbell, their head coach. They will host these Sooners next week in Ames. This Big 12 play rolls along. First down to 10 at the 25 for Oklahoma. Radler drops it off. Caught Charleston Rambo. Nice move after the catch. Gets outside down the sideline. A big gain for Charleston Rambo. And that's the thing about this Oklahoma team. Not only do they have great quarterbacks, it seems like there's always a big time receiver. Yeah, and that's the truth. Someone got banged up there. An OU player is down. And that's Weiss. So we're trying to cut across the field there and everybody pick up blocks. You know. This year it's Charleston Rambo and maybe Marvin Mims. Last year it was C.D. Lamb. The year before that it was was little guys from Florida. Uh, you you originally called him Hollywood. I, I can't call him Hollywood anymore. I can't. Why is that? Well, last year Hollywood Brown said he was going to send me a jersey. I look online. He's got a clothing line where he's selling all these nice sweatshirts and hoodies and whatnot. He didn't send you one? He, you know, no love so, at all. So let me get this straight. Hollywood, I know you're watching because you don't play until Monday. Gus gave you the nickname. That's right. No love. Okay. So Maybe okay. we should just yeah, go back to what's the, the little Yeah, Marquise, you know, Marquise. He was a good player. He was all right. <laughs> no, we love Hollywood Brown. He's our guy. So proud of him to see what he's doing with the Baltimore Ravens and Lamar Jackson. As Weiss 
walks off the field on his own. But I still would like my number 15 with Hollywood <laughs> on the back and a nice hoodie with Hollywood Brown and prime time Jet on it. All joking aside. All oh, joking aside. Swag. Have now, your people get in contact with my people. <laughs> Oh, man, I'm sure Baker and Kyler and Jalen are watching as well. Interested in what they think of this young quarterback, Spencer Rattler, as he's filling in their shoes. Oh! And Kansas State, do they have it? Looks like they do. How about that? Drew Wiley with the recovery. But there is a flag on the play. Jaron McPherson came up and absolutely walloped the true freshman Seth McGowan from the safety position. Oh my goodness. He has played an unbelievable game today. The result of the play is a fumble recovered by Kansas State. After the play, unsportsmanlike conduct, number 32 of Kansas State. That'll be a 15-yard penalty. That's number 32's first unsportsmanlike of the game. Justin Hughes, the senior. But first, McPherson comes up from his safety position, and he was flying up to the line of scrimmage and just absolutely laid the hammer down on McGowan. That ball came right out. Wiley was able to pick it up. They do get moved back because of that penalty, but this is an offense that has a rhythm now. They've had those big plays. Taylor for the touchdown, Deuce Vaughn for 77 yards. They just found Mosey on a busted coverage for OU. So we'll see if Thompson and this Wildcat offense can continue to get rolling here and maybe get within a score. A touchdown here would make it interesting as we head to the fourth quarter. Vaughn in motion out of the backfield, lines up as a wide receiver. Skyler Thompson, deep ball again, and incomplete. Intended for Taylor, Jaden Davis covering for OU. Davis the sophomore, he's only 5'10", so they certainly have a height advantage. Kansas State does with Sebastian Taylor. They've tried to do it earlier in the game and were successful against Trey Brown on the opposite side. And they tried for it right there. But you can tell this Kansas State offense looking for those big plays. And in order to do that, you got to have good protection. And Gus, the offensive line has been much better in the last what, quarter and a half or so. Second down and 10 at the 47. And they run a reverse with Knowles. Malik Knowles, the sophomore from Mansfield, Texas. Turns a corner, picks up a few. Three to be exact. Well, here's that big down. Here's third down. They have not been successful on third down. They weren't successful in their first game. They struggled today. Might be two down territory in particular if you can gain about three or four, maybe five yards. Kansas State, one of seven on third down conversions. Third down and seven. See if they can find Vaughn in space out of the backfield. Here's Thompson looking underneath. And guess who? It's Deuce. Again, Deuce Vaughn. High stepping out of bounds at the 15. Breaking three tackles. Great little route. Love the design from this play. They just fake it to the out route, and then he comes back in on a little angle. We called it Texas back in the day. And Deuce Vaughn catches it and then breaks three tackles. One, two, three, and then he's all the way down the side. And that fourth tackle that he breaks. Oh, man, Deuce is on the loose for sure here in Norman, Oklahoma. And that'll take us to the end of the third quarter. 35-21, but Kansas State. Still competing on the road in Norman. Back to start the fourth after this. Big Noon Saturday is sponsored by AT&T Business. Welcome back to Gaylor Family Oklahoma Memorial Stadium. Kansas State scoring 14 points in the third. It's a 35-21 game. We start the fourth. Wildcats first and 10 at the Oklahoma 15. Jacardier Wright. 
Gets down the sideline, out of bounds inside the OU 10. Gus, this is exactly what the worst nightmare is for Alex Grinch, the defensive coordinator, Lincoln Riley, and, and frankly, OU fans everywhere, is the continuation of what we saw a year ago, which was stretches of great defense from OU, and then stretches where they cannot get out of their own way, and the opposition is going up and down the field. These big plays have absolutely killed Oklahoma here in the last about three or four possessions, and Kansas State looks primed to get within a touchdown here late. Second and four. Deuce Vaughn in the backfield. They fire it out wide, and it's caught by Brooks. Brooks lunging forward. Bradley Hiles with the tackle for Oklahoma. This is this is critical here. Even though they found success and their defense has even played well, you don't know how long your defense can hold up, right? They've gotten the turnovers. So, Gus, you've got to score a touchdown here. Even though there's 14 minutes left and it's only a 14-point game, a conver converting this into a score is critical here for Kansas State. Got to pick this third down up. Third down and four at the nine. Thompson! And what a run by Skyler Thompson. Looks like he has the first down. Remember, he's got a bad, bad calf muscle, as Jenny told us. So he's hobbling, but gutting it out anyway. Boy, I think this is a bad spot. I, I mean, I could, I could be wrong here, but they're going to put him short. And it's going to be fourth down, and they're going to stay on the field, get to the line quickly. Let's see if they snap and go for a sneak. Fourth down and goal at the six. There's your sneak. Prior to the snap, we were paged to review the previous play of a line to game. Boy, Kansas State hates that because the sneak would have gotten the first down, right? So now, let's say that they <laughs> review it, still make it fourth down. Now you got to come up to the line of scrimmage. You don't have the element of that tempo in order to QB sneak again. So this is, this is not advantageous for Kansas State unless you see Thompson limping a little bit and even on that option here's the sneak this is this is not what they're reviewing this is the sneak they blew this dead beforehand but this is the sneak would have gotten the first down they're they're going to review the option play on third down to see if he got the line of game Gus I thought he made it Joining us now, our rules analysts in Los Angeles, Dino Blandino. Dean, what do you think? It's really close. The line of game was the five. Looks like the right elbow is the first body part to hit. Then we have to say, okay, where is the ball in relation to the five? I just don't know if we've got enough evidence to overturn it. And, and again, I agree with you, Joel. You'd like to have replay stop that early so that we're not running another play because now we've taken away that what should have been a first down, and now we're going we're gonna to wipe it out and look at the, uh, the previous play. I, I see what you mean there about the elbow. But, but again, in the, in the sequence of it, Kansas State hates this review. They're going to hate it even more Absolutely. if they basically say that the call stands and we don't have enough evidence to overturn and give them the first down because now they'll have to run a snap in the normal course of football where Definitely OU gets to set up. On the field stands as called. Fourth down. Yeah, this, is, this is the worst nightmare for Kansas State. Dean, thank you very much. So that brings up fourth down and a yard for Chris Kleiman's offense. Coach Kleiman turns 53 years old tomorrow in his second year at K-State. Eight and five last season. Fourth down and one. Thompson has been successful with those quarterback keepers. And if I was Oklahoma, I would stick a linebacker right up, right in the center's face. And now, guys, you could just sneak it again. And there's the sneak, and it's a first down. I, I think that's. You know, they've shown that they want to do this. Look at this hole right here. Thompson, all he's got to do is just go right up the middle, and he can just lean over the five-yard line for a first down. I think you've got to have somebody right over the center in that quarterback sneak situation. I, that's poor alignment, I think, from OU, but a nice conversion there from K, for, for K-State. And now first and goal, Gus, for this team that just keeps swinging and battling and battling and battling with all those players out, looking to get within one score here of the number three team in the country in the fourth quarter. First down and goal at the four. Time 
timeout, Kansas State. Kansas State wants to talk things over, 35-21. Big News Saturday is sponsored by Pacific Life. More than 150 years strong. Trust in your tomorrow. And by Rocket Mortgage for the personalized playbook on home loans. Rocket can. Momentum starting to shift a bit here in the fourth quarter. 35-21 OU. However, Kansas State facing a first down and goal at the Oklahoma Four. Remember this offensive line brand new this year. They've struggled running the football between the tackles. They might have to do something misdirection, maybe get an option out on the outside. Thompson out of the shotgun. Runs it himself. He's got the corner, dives. Touchdown, K-State. Skyler Thompson. Bad calf and all. Keeping the Wildcats in this game. Remember, he had four touchdowns against Oklahoma rushing the ball last year in Manhattan. That's his seventh rushing touchdown against OU in the last two years. So right there, he had his eyes planted all over the left side. I said he needed some misdirection. They run the quarterback counter, eyes on the left. Now he takes off to the right with a pulling guard, and then it's just a race to the pylon, and he's able to beat Brian Asamoa to the end zone. What grit, man. What toughness from this team. How about K-State? Totally undermanned on the road at the third-ranked team in the country. Gus, and it's a one-score game. Skyler Thompson using his size and speed to get in. 35-28. 35-28, Skyler Thompson running one into the end zone and Kansas State right in this game. As you take a look at what he's done against Oklahoma over the last couple of years. Well, I said he was going to have to play great today if they wanted a chance, and he has done that. He's found big plays. He's run for touchdowns. This guy has been a leader. He's played with a lot of heart today. This entire Kansas State, Kansas State team has. Zentner. And it will be Rambo from the goal line. Rambo picking his way forward, crosses the 20, and Zentner the kicker with the tackle on special teams. Holding, receiving team number 26. Penalty will be 10 yards from the spot of the foul. It'll be first down. Well, let's look at our Pacific Life game summary sponsored by Pacific Life. More than 150 years strong. Trust your tomorrow. This second half, Rattler redirected Jeremiah Hall for a touchdown. He's certainly been great today. But then it's been about the big plays for Kansas State. First, Deuce Vaughn got loose. OU answered with a touchdown of their own. Then Skyler Thompson found Mo Mosey, a freshman running back, right down the sideline for another big play. And the turnover, the defense turning it up for the Wildcats, getting the ball back for their senior quarterback who took it in for a touchdown, his third rushing touchdown of the day. And now it's a one possession game. And this is the mark, this is the challenge for a young offense. Can Skyler, or excuse me, can Spencer Rattler answer Skyler Thompson? Rattler forced out of the pocket and throws that one out of bounds. He does have his center back. Creed Humphrey is back in the game. He battled an injury for the last couple of possessions, but he is back in the game. But th th that was just a free rusher. Miscommunication on the outside of the offensive line. And the guard, Marquise Hayes, 54, just allowed Duke right into the face of Rattler. And this is the this is the challenge for any quarterback. One possession, fourth quarter. What do you do? How do you respond? Second down and 10 from the 12. And that went over the middle for Reese. Weiss, boy, that was a tough catch to hold on to that football, and he took it right in the ribs. McPherson again with the big hit from the safety position. He does it the right way, goes low with the shoulder, and Weiss is able to hang on. How about the hands from Weiss on that catch? Wow. Theo Weiss. Gives Oklahoma a first down. I think that you're going to take a look. The completed pass is under further review. To see if 
he actually hung on because it looked like his hands were the first thing to go down and maybe that the ball touched the turf. And if it comes loose after it touches the turf, then, uh -oh. yep, that one's not going to stand. That one's not going to stand as he lost possession when it hit the ground. Credit Jaron McPherson again with a big hit. He's the one that just caused the fumble on the previous series. And there he hit Weiss as he was trying to catch that ball. And it looks like, at least in my estimation, that this will be overturned to become an incomplete pass. McPherson was a junior college transfer from Butler Community College. He did start last year 12 times, made 36 tackles. And I thought he's been brilliant today. I just think the entire Kansas State team, considering what they're facing or what they were facing coming into this game, has just played a gritty, gritty football game. There's no question about that. I mean, you remember the first thing Coach Kleiman said to us on our call? He said, hey, hey, Joel, can you play corner, corner for us? <laughs> I mean, that's how bad it was in the defensive backfield. Again, five guys in there too deep, starting guys that were not even on there too deep at corner uh, to begin the season and and they have hung in there and they've done a great job their best defensive tackle is out eli huggins uh and they have just continued to swing and fight and battle against the third ranked team in the country and all credit goes to them in particular after that tough week one loss against arkansas state They're just trying to get what, what's taking so long here, folks, is they're trying to get the chain set. They're going to try to go back and set the chains. What's the down? What's the distance? Where was the previous spot? Coach Kleiman spent five years at FCS North Dakota State going 69 and six and winning national championships, four national championships to be exact. Won the Missouri Valley Football Conference all five seasons. Replaced the legendary Bill Snyder, who retired after the 2018 year. Reviewing the play, the ball hit the ground, therefore it's an incomplete pass. And it'll be third down and 10 at the 12 yard line. Please reset the game clock to 12 minutes and 9 seconds. You know, that first season for him last year started off with a bang. Kleiman led his team to a road win at SEC Mississippi State in week, th week three. Then they beat this Oklahoma team at home 48 41 in a signature win and everyone's been asked about it this week on both sides and they all try to say ah, it's a different year this and that but man I mean trying to follow it up for a second straight year would be really groundbreaking for this program in terms of what they're trying to continue to build on the legacy that Bill Snyder built there with the Wildcats Ball start, offense number five. Wow, wow. Five yard penalty to a third down. It's pleasure. This this is when a team needs a veteran leader at the quarterback position. Because you gotta have some there's only so much a center can say to everybody on the field. This is when as a as a veteran quarterback you pull everyone in the huddle, whether you huddle or not, and you say, listen, everyone focus. We gotta go out there and play with great execution and detail. Meanwhile, Kansas State with an opportunity to get off the field to give their offense the football. OU faced with a third down and 15 at the seven. Rattler boxes it out. Rattler throws. At the 32-yard line. What a throw. Theo Howard found a soft spot. That looked like a Patrick Mahomes pass. Oh boy, running, sprinting to his right and throwing it all the way across his body back to the left. And he really left the pocket a little too soon. I thought that there was no need for him to race out of the pocket like that, but he takes off and he's got the arm strength to get it down the field to Theo Howard, who found the soft spot in the defense for a huge conversion there on third and long, backed up in the shadow of his own goal line. So at third and 15, Suiters get 25 yards. Gives him a little bit of breathing room. Pledger. 
And Drew Wiley with the tackle for K-State. Man, that was a huge, huge conversion. And now, if you're Lincoln Riley, it's not full milk the clock mode, but wouldn't you love for the offensive line to just start owning the game, lean on that defensive line, be able to run some clock, not have to put your quarterback in those long yardage situations. You look up front and you got a true freshman at left tackle. You've got a veteran leader in there at center. These guys are going to have to own the rest of this fourth quarter. Second and nine at the 33. Magala changes directions, breaks it inside and picks up the first. There's that old line you talked about, partner, firing off the football and creating some space. Not only that, but how about McGowan? Watch as he kind of stops and then he goes all the way out to the right side. Look at this vision. You know, he's not quite this guy, but that's like a, you know how Le'Veon Bell just kind of yeah. sits after he gets the ball and then finds a spot to expose? That's almost what it reminded me of right there. Gate of 14, first down to the 47. McGowan dragged out from behind. Looks like a late flag thrown on the play. Spencer Trussell, the sophomore from Arlington, Texas, with the tackle. Holding offense number 54, 10 yard penalty, replay first down. That's Marquise Hayes, the left guard. And it's right in the middle of your screen right there. And he certainly turns him around. Great job. Drew Wiley was trying to spin back, number 50, 59, and Hayes just had a big fistful of jersey. So that makes it first down and 20 at the 37. The penalties today, OU, seven penalties for 55 yards. I've always thought Riley does a great job of calling a play right now to get half of it back. It's designed to get 10 or more yards here to try to create second and 10, second and eight. Pledger. Bronson Massey, Ross Elder combining on the tackle for K-State. Tempo has certainly slowed down, hasn't it? Yes, it has. And they have not snapped the ball, you know, all that quickly. They get up to the line of scrimmage. There's a quick snap. Second down at 17. Rattler drops it off. Pledger breaks the tackle. And he'll get it to midfield. I mean, that is a great individual effort by Pledger because it's going to be third and long, but he's able to break that tackle, spin out, and now it creates a much more third and manageable situation here for this offense. Here he is. He's working against A.J. Parker, and Parker tries to go low, but he dips his head, and he's unable to wrap up, and you can tell he was frustrated with himself after that missed tackle. Third down and seven. At midfield for Oklahoma, empty backfield. For Spencer Rattler, low snap, he handles it, sprints out of the pocket, in trouble, lets it fly. Incomplete as he throws it out of bounds. Great defense. They ran this concept earlier in the game, and it was an easy completion for a first down, but here's what they did. The coverage sat under the out route. They're trying to get the out route to Weiss on the outside. It's just kind of a sprint right option, but watch right here. Look, there's nowhere to throw. The defender just sat right in front of that out route. He did a wonderful job of understanding what Oklahoma's tendency was, and then they called the perfect defense there, and they were able to get themselves off the field. Got to watch out for a fake here. Khalid Duke with pressure on Rattler. As Oklahoma will punt it away. Delay a game on the kicking team. Five yard penalty remains fourth down. Reeves Munchow, the punter, will send it away from the 31. Phillip oh. Brooks, the deep man. And how about this? Kansas State blocks it. And they are in business deep inside Oklahoma territory. Woo, how about that? Second straight week. Both ball games.
times they have blocked the punt, and the man who just didn't miss that tackle, he came off the edge like a rocket. A.J. Parker with the block, number 12. Here he's going to get outside, and then he's just all speed. Gets himself all the way to the punter. It was a bit slow to get off, and he lays out and gets the block. What a turn of events and a short field here for Kansas State. Excellent effort by A.J. Parker. Nick Allen with the recovery. 8.28 to play in the fourth, down 35-28. Kansas State with the football at the OU 28-yard line. Skyler Thompson has been excellent at quarterback in the second half. Here's Thompson, delivers and incomplete. Taylor, closest man to the football for the Wildcats. Well, they got to find that rhythm now. They, they had some big plays, and they've been getting them through the passing game. You know, that, that run game has, has not been great today. They're only rushing it for just under one and a half yards per 31 carries, 22 yards. So, the, the, or excuse me, 30, 22 carries, 31 yards. This is a team that's going to have to do this through the air. It's going to be all Skyler Thompson trying to get creative. On second down, Vaughn. They didn't get lined up, and they just run a very simple lead play, a little bit of an ISO play. Watch the defense. None of them get set. See how they're talking to each other? They're trying to see where they're going to get set, and then it's just a simple little lead play, and there's two OU defenders there, and he just splits them and goes for a touchdown. Radley Hiles goes too far outside, and Vaughn just stays skinny close to his offensive lineman and goes for the touchdown. Wow, just a defensive collapse by Oklahoma in this second half, and Kansas State will go for two. Kansas State going for two. Vaughn in the backfield with Thompson. Hired in the snap, delay a game on the offense. Five yard penalty. It's still be on the down. Well, now they'll just kick it. Boy, that was going to be a very bold call by Chris Kleinman. I, I'm not sure I agree with trying to go for two right there. There's still 8-17 left. They have all the momentum. They've been the better team in particular in the fourth quarter. I, I don't know that he needed to go for the win right there. And so that delay might have saved them a little bit, and they'll just kick this one for the, for the time. Lake Lynch. The equalizer, and we are level at 35. 8.17 to play in the fourth. A block punt. Huge play for Kansas State. And Deuce Vaughn pays it off. 35 up, back after this. How about this? 35-35. We've got a game now, folks. 8-17 to go. Big 12 opener for OU and K-State. 21-7 at halftime, but we've seen a different Kansas State team in the second half. Well, and they have been attacking on all sides. The defense has forced turnovers. Special teams has made big plays. Their offense has created huge plays, and OU's defense has just absolutely collapsed in this second half. Let's take a look at how they've done it. You know, first of all, they were able to just chip away. Grit, toughness, a couple of big plays. You get a couple of quarterback seats, but then the turnover started. Boom. There's a big turnover. They capitalized with the touchdown. Thompson's in the end zone. Then the huge play here. Punt. A.J. Parker lays out. They block the punt, get a short field, and Deuce, he's on the loose into the end zone. Easy touchdown for Kansas State there, and it's a tie ball game, and now they've got all the momentum. So there's this, here's this team. Chris Kleiman brings in a team that's 0-1. They lost to Arkansas State. They've got well over 7, 10 guys out due to COVID contact tracing and quarantine and isolation. They're totally depleted, and they're tied with the number three team in the country. 8-17 Offense, five-yard penalty, first down. Young quarterback, got to get the ball snap. That's 
This this is gut check moment here for Oklahoma and Spencer Rattler. They haven't been in too many of these games, period, but much less here young in his career. Rattler out of the pocket now, sets up, nobody home, reverses field, he's got some space, cuts it up, and is chopped down at the 25 as he gets up to the 27. And one thing that I really thought that we were going to be able to see because of his arm talent is big plays down the field. And guess what? Kansas State has not given up at all. Any big plays down the field. The safeties have stayed deep and done a great job. Rattler to his right. Delivers and it's Stoops. Drake Stoops has had a huge game. Three catches, close to 100 yards receiving. He's got 92 yards receiving. Had that touchdown. That was a nice route right there. Found the opening and is able to move the chains. First down at the 37. Rattler sliding in trouble. Gets it off and incomplete. That one thrown high for TJ Pledger. Rattler seems a little unnerved in the pocket. Rattled, baby? Yeah, and. and he, he's taken a couple of hits here, and here he certainly takes another. I believe that was Duke, Khalid Duke. Struggled with cramps earlier in the game. He's a young defensive end that they think is going to be a great player. He was a triple jump state champion in the state of Georgia. Has that explosiveness there as one of their really talented young defensive ends. Second down to 10 at the 37. Rattler guns it over the middle, incomplete. Stockner, the intended receiver, that brings up third down and long. Kansas State with the chance to get off the field. And guess who was in on the pressure? Our guy we just talked about, Khalid Duke. Look at him spin back into the pocket, and he forces that ball to come out of Rattler's hand just a little earlier than he wanted to, and here's the big play. They got to protect. Rattler's got to make a play down the field, and they have not been able to get open on those secondary and, and third-level intermediate zones. Third down, 10, Rattler. Fires across his body, flags all over the place. Stockner with the catch. But let's see. I think you're going to have penalties on both teams. Stockner was being held, but in the backfield, it looked like Tyrese Robinson, the right guard, was getting called for holding as well. There are two fouls on the play, one on each team. Holding defense number 25, holding offense number 52. The penalties offset will replay third down. So here's, here's the first holding. Pretty clear, Tyrese Robinson, in particular as Rattler tries to break the pocket, there's the hold. And then you've got here in the back end, there's Stogner and he's getting held by Will Jones as he was trying to work away for that first down. So now we do it all over again. Another big third down here. Third down and 10. Spencer Rattler dancing out of the pocket. He sacked at the 25. Bronson Massey got there. And Oklahoma has to punt it away with 6.59 to go. Game tied at 35. What a great job. He's going to work back inside. Watch him as he works up to the right shoulder of the guard. Then he spins back to the inside. That forces the pressure. And then he just continues on Rattler, who had nowhere to go with the ball. It's what I told you at the start of the series. Oklahoma is unable to get any separation there in the back end of the secondary. Ball fair caught at the 40. So 6.32 to go. Fourth quarter. Kansas State with the ball. Great field position. Level at 35. Big Noon Saturday is sponsored by GEICO. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. What a game we've got going on right now, folks. 35-35, 6.32 to play in the fourth quarter. Kansas State, they were gritty in the first half to be only down by 14 going into halftime, but the second half, they've owned it. Yeah, they sure have, and their quarterback has been great today, hasn't he? Tough, he's made some good throws. Their running game finally got going on that last series with Deuce Vaughn. See where they go here. First down and 10 of the 39 for Skyler Thompson. Thompson will throw on first down, winds up big, oh, and he's got his receiver.
Fever, Phillip Brooks. Great throw, better adjustment by Brooks. Working against Radley Hiles. And Oklahoma cannot stop the bleeding. Last year when they went to Manhattan and lost, Kansas State scored on eight straight possessions at one point. Right now, currently in this game, Kansas State is on their fourth straight possession that they've scored. And now, Skyler Thompson has his first 300-yard passing game. He's thrown for 310 yards, a career high. Man, he has been really good, and they can't get pressure to him. They haven't gotten to him outside of maybe the first quarter. They got a couple of hits on him. And the defensive backs just continue to get beat, and they're trying to play man coverage, but they're starting to get beat now in man coverage. And I don't think Alex Grinch really knows where to go with the scheme right now because they're even against Kansas State, a bit outmanned on the edge. Second and eight at the 36. Mosey in the backfield. Thompson, wide open! More! Touchdown, Wildcats! And Kansas State takes the lead with under six minutes to play, but there is a flag. An eligible player downfield. Offense number zero. Number zero was covered up on the line of scrimmage and went downfield. Yeah, this this looked weird even when it when it started because when they they bounce the tight ends over, okay, so they shift the tight ends over. All right, so he's right here, but the problem is is that the wide receivers never moved, so the outside receiver is on the line of scrimmage, which means that that tight end is covered up. Now he can line up there as long as it's a run play, or he doesn't go out for the pass. But as soon as he released, then it was an ineligible. That's something that the quarterback has to know. He's got to make sure that his wide receiver is off. The the line of scrimmage there and not covering up the tight end. Kansas State with two timeouts left, only one timeout remaining for Oklahoma. Second and 13. Low snap, bobble. Thompson on the move, incomplete. He had some running room. He and Deuce were just trying to improvise there. He did. Partner, you're right. I thought he could have gotten probably six, seven yards right there. If he just puts his head down and goes and dives forward, he probably makes this a, a third and seven rather than a third and long. But here we go, and we'll see if Oklahoma can present some sort of pressure on Skyler Thompson because these secondary players are not holding up well right now in coverage. Third and 13 at the 41. Skyler Thompson drops it off. Deuce Vaughn. Great open field tackle for this Oklahoma squad. Jaden Davis prevents Vaughn from picking up the first down. What a tackle by Davis, and it forces Kleiman into a decision here, and he's going to go ahead and kick it. And it should be noted, his kicker last year was terrific. And Blake Lynch only missed two field goals, but in week one against Arkansas State, Gus, he missed two field goals. So this one for Lynch from 50 yards away. Good! And Kansas State takes the lead. Blake Lynch with a career-long 50-yarder. And the Wildcats go up 38-35 with under five minutes to go in Norman. to 35 as Kansas State kicks it off and out of the back of the end zone Lynch career long 50 yard field goal to give the Wildcats the lead yeah especially after those two misses you know you miss two they lose by four you had to feel terrible after that game against Arkansas State and now making that kick 
against the Sooners here on the road. And, and Spencer Rattler and this team, they have got to answer. They they have been low energy on offense. They haven't had great tempo. The offensive line has not protected. The run game has been hit or miss in this second half. A lot of Rattler trying to just run around outside of the pocket, and that won't get it done here. Here's Rattler to throw it on first down to the sideline, and a nice tackle for Kansas State. Beautifully done by Boydo. As Willis makes the reception, and he's down. Braden Willis got hit low by Echo Boydo. Just stay down. Man, the secondary, again, you cannot say this enough. They are, they are completely decimated. They got guys playing corner that weren't on the depth chart. They were moving safeties to corner. They're, they're bringing wide receivers over during their bye week. A.J. Parker has had to be a mainstay, and he's been really good today. Jerron McPherson has been sensational. Remember, it was Parker with the blocked field goal. McPherson forced that fumble on a previous series. These guys have played absolutely fabulous against this Oklahoma team, in particular in this second half. And, and now they're in position to win the game. And this is when your pass rush has got to show up if you're with the front four. Second down and seven. Pledger. He crosses the line of scrimmage and gets walloped by Justin Hughes. And Hughes, man, he closed hard he was way outside walked out over the wide receiver and he closed hard and now a big third down here Rattler on third down Rattler steps up in the pocket looking for the first down has it and more Rattler crosses into Kansas State territory Elijah Sullivan with the tackle but there is a flag on the play holding offense number 52 that's Tyrese Robinson again, the right guard. He's had a couple of holding calls. He's he's standing really upright, and whenever you're upright like that, to his credit, it's hard to block when your quarterback is leaving the pocket. But he just kind of region when you get caught standing straight up as an offensive lineman, all you can do is reach and grab. And that's what happened there on that last play. So how about this third down and 18 for Oklahoma from the 17-yard line. Rattler with time. Rattler sacked again. Khalid Duke. And another flag. Holding defense, number 56. The 10-yard penalty, and we'll replay third down. Watch this. Wyatt Hubert, the veteran defensive end. Here's Wyatt Hubert, and he's look looks like he's going to rush, but he's just kind of chipping Jeremiah Hall. Hall looks to get out in the route, and he can't right there. He's being held. Excellent call by the official. Even though Rattler wasn't necessarily looking right at him, certainly a hold and a huge one there. And Khalid Duke having his shoulder looked at on the Kansas State sideline. Third down and eight after the penalty. Spencer Rattler. Dancing. Rattler throws. And incomplete. Now in a few moments, those of you in parts of Texas will be taken to the kickoff of Texas and Texas Tech. It is also available on FS2 and streaming live on the Fox Sports app. We will get you out there at the immediate conclusion of our game. For those leaving us, you can still stream our game on the Fox Sports app. So with two minutes and 56 seconds remaining, Oklahoma will punt it away. I don't know about this goal from Lincoln Riley. He's only got one timeout left. And he's putting the fate of the game in his defense's hands. And Gus, that defense has not been very good. You take a, uh, take a look through 
Lincoln Riley's tenure here at Oklahoma. Here are the losses in Big 12 play. It was Iowa State 38-31, then in Red River. We all remember Dicker, the kicker. And then it was this Kansas State team last year in Manhattan behind a brilliant performance from Skyler Thompson and that defense that was able to stun the Oklahoma Sooners. And they are in position, speaking of the Wildcats, to do it for a second straight year. 2.49 left with only one timeout. If their defense had played better in the second half, I would understand punting this away. Not going to make a living disagreeing with Lincoln Riley, but Gus, I, I think he should have gone for it right there, even though his offense wasn't playing great. Vaughn running on first down, wants to stay in bounds, and does. One timeout left for Oklahoma. Looks like he just took it right there. In the meantime, let's go to Los Angeles and check in with Rob Stone. Coming to us. Gus, Joel, thank you very much. Uh, concerns for Oklahoma offensive line and defense. You start with the D. Yeah, the defense is, is again, they're, they're not looking great down the stretch at the end of the game. When you need to be making those sure tackles, when you need to be making those plays and keeping them out of the end zone, uh, it's not looking great for Oklahoma, but still a game. Yeah, they still have an opportunity. I, I just think, you know, when you look at this, well, first of all, they need to get a stop here, but offensively for Oklahoma, the offensive line has just been poor. And Spencer Rattler back there, he, he looks like a freshman today. And I really think what's missing from this game is his ability to run the football. Not that he can't, but you saw the years pass, right, with Murray and Hurts. They could just tuck and run and get those first downs. He's keeping his eyes downfield, but he hasn't been able to make those plays. Um, and a tough holding call coach in the last series. But this, this comes down to the defensive stand right here. 31 second half points for Kansas State. Gus, they've got the lead in trying to milk that clock. No doubt about it. Wildcats up 38-35, second and 13. Thompson drops it over the middle, and it's caught. Reception made by Samuel Wheeler, but there is a flag on the play. I think they got another formation issue here. An eligible player downfield, offense number 19. And the 19 was covered up on the line of scrimmage and went downfield. Five-yard penalty, replay second down. I know it's a lot to think about, but, but Gus, I'm telling you, as a veteran quarterback, you've got to survey your formation and make sure everyone is lined up correctly. That's one thing that I would, if I was Chris Kleiman, I would be making sure that Skyler Thompson knew, and he should know that. He's starting up as his 29th start for the Kansas State Wildcats, and this one backed him up here bad here second and long from the 19 yard line Thompson hit as he throws and it's caught by Riley Moore he had to get rid of that one quickly because he was getting pummeled in the back of that pocket by Brian Osamoa who is in on a pressure Thompson's been brilliant, folks. 320 yards passing. He's got the three-point lead. But there has not been a bigger snap than this one. Oklahoma out of timeouts. Third down. Gus, this is the ball game right here. Sooners have got to get a stop if they want to avoid, avoid this loss. Clock still running. Kansas State in no rush. The third-ranked team in the nation. Oklahoma on the ropes at home. Kansas State has been brilliant in the second half. And a timeout called by the Cats. We'll step away. 142 to go. Back in a moment. One forty-two to play in the fourth quarter here in Norman. Kansas State, can they hold on? Is the question. Oklahoma out of timeouts. Got to utilize the formation to get one of their tall wide receivers or tight end lined up on one of the corners. And that's exactly what it looks like they're going to do. Briley Moore is the tight end. He's lined up on a corner. That's a huge mismatch right now. Kansas State with one timeout left. Thompson. Over the middle, caught, Vaughn, he will not get the first down. Oh, he had all sorts of room. 
on the outside, and they were trying to run that same little route that they completed earlier. He's going to run what's called that little Texas route where he's going there, but all the space is on the outside. Watch as he turns back to the defense, but right there, he could have just run all the way down the sideline. He runs right into the defender, and Justin Broyles makes the tackle and forces the punt. A missed opportunity there for Kansas State. Works to the benefit of Oklahoma as now we're inching closer to a minute left. Jack Bloomer will punt it away from his own 10-yard line. Marvin Mims, the deep man for OU at his own 25. Mims will give it a go from the 25, and he's wrapped up immediately. Brock Monty with the tackle on special teams for K-State. Wow, 49 seconds left. They need three. There's no timeouts. Basically, every pass has to go past the chains, in my estimation. You cannot get caught where you are getting tackled short of the first down marker and having the clock run. So this ball has got to go past 10 yards every time he throws it. You can throw it over the middle, but then you got to get right up there right away and either spike the ball or have another play called. First down at the 24 for Rattler. Here's Rattler to the sideline. And that ball squirts out. And it's an incomplete pass. Great defense by Elijah Sullivan. They're trying to throw that little out route to the slot receiver who was Charleston Rambo, but the middle linebacker Sullivan was right there. The middle of the field is wide open. They've got to find a way to get to the middle of the field. These outbreaking routes are not there, and Kansas State is playing heavy outside leverage, even with those linebackers. They've got to find a way to exploit this area of the zone. Second down and 10, Rattler steps up over the middle. Incomplete, or is it an interception? That's McPherson. McPherson picks it off. Third interception of the day for Rattler. And with 34 seconds to go, Kansas State has the ball and a 38-35 lead. This is just a poor throw from Rattler. He's gonna have Stoops open, but he throws it over his head. As he scoots up into the pocket, what you're gonna see is Stoops breaks it across the linebacker's face. All he's got to do is throw it and hit him in the chest, and it's going to be a first down for Oklahoma, but he throws it way too high and a little behind Stoops, who can't go up and even get a hand on it. McPherson is right there. He caused the turnover earlier. He gets this pick to seal the win for Kansas State. What a win for Kansas State. Unbelievable effort. Toughness. Grit. Everything you want to say, you can say it about Chris Kleiman as his Wildcats beat Oklahoma for the second straight year. What a signature win, though. This time winning on the road at Oklahoma. 38-35, Kansas State defeats the third-ranked team in the nation. The first Road win versus an AP top three team in school history. Only his second season in Manhattan. Wow. They could never stop the bleeding. Uh, speaking of Oklahoma, they couldn't do it on the offensive side or the defensive side. No one made a play. And then that Kansas State team, they just kept fighting and kept swinging. The offensive line played much better. And Gus, Skyler Thompson, what a performance from the senior quarterback. Skyler Thompson throws for his first 300-yard game. And Kansas State comes into Norman and defeats Oklahoma. Coming up after this break, we'll take you out to Lubbock for Texas and Texas Tech. 38-35.